Ford Super Sunday. After a shaky start, there are signs that Charlton are stirring. Can they now find the belief to get going at the Valley? He thinks Rovers have underachieved recently, but the last time they were in the capital, they beat the champions. got the greater desire today. Well, he's certainly still got enough to want to win wherever he takes his team. Worthington Cup last season, European competition this, they're neatly placed in eighth and they are difficult to beat on the road. Very difficult. Our live Super Sunday football comes from the Valley. It's Charlton against Blackburn. Charlton with just the one home win all season. Rovers have been beaten just the once on the road this season. Barkard Premiership. The only change in the drop zone this weekend. West Ham rock bottom again as a result of the four that they shipped at Aston Villa. West Brom, despite the fact that they were beaten, into 19th. No change for Bolton, who were leading against Chelsea until the last minute. Sunderland beaten at home by Birmingham, of course. Charlton are hosts today. Manchester City leads Birmingham, Fulham. Aston Villa making up the bottom half. Leeds, incidentally, trailing in the pay-per-view game at Tottenham 2-0. Spurs 10th. Then it's Southampton into 9th at the moment. Blackburn, Newcastle, Middlesbrough, Manchester United 5th now. Chelsea down into 4th. Everton up into third on the back of six straight wins, five straight one nils. Liverpool and Arsenal, the top two, both beaten this weekend, but no change there. The form guide looks like that. West Brom rock bottom with the Hammers. Fulham, just one win in the last six, and that was against Liverpool yesterday. Leeds in the wrong half as well, which tells its own story. Top half. Rovers, halfway, Newcastle, Manchester City and United, Arsenal, Villa into fifth, Liverpool, Southampton, Chelsea and Everton, six straight wins. Coming up on a Super Sunday, we'll take a closer look at the Valley, now and then, ten years back, when Charlton came home. And we'll be hearing from Rovers' David Thompson. And who's this? Claire Tomlinson with the teams. Well, Richard, ongoing injury problems for manager Alan Kerbishley. He's actually struggling to find 16 fit players as Gary Rowett and Jonathan Johansson both join the walking wounded. Problems too for Graham Souness, inform keeper Brad Friedel out with that knee problem and Tugai is suspended today. Dean Kiley ever present for Charlton this season. 22-year-old Jonathan Fortune deputises for Rowett. He's ruled out with a thigh injury. Scott Parker makes his 100th appearance for the club. Jason Newell scored the winner in Charlton's sole home win this season against Middlesbrough. Sean Bartlett was the hero against Manchester City last weekend. Kevin Lisby comes in for hamstring victim Jörg Hansen. And Matt Svensson is involved for the first time since September. Alan Kelly makes his first Premiership appearance of the season for Blackburn, as does former Charlton player Andy Todd. David Dunn, he captains the side, and Damien Duff does play after struggling with a calf injury which kept him out of the Republic of Ireland squad in midweek. Up front is Andy Cole, who scored his first Blackburn goal against Charlton in the 4-1 win at Ewood in January. Egil Oshtenstadt plays with him. He keeps his place ahead of Dwight York. But no doubt all eyes today will be on Andy Todd making his return to the Valley. Just thinking watching Manchester United, Tim, those tussles that Blackburn and United used to have, they were wonderful fixtures both to, well, to watch. What about to take part in? Oh, they're great. I mean, it's always a great occasion, no matter who you're playing for, to play against Man United, especially at Old Trafford. And um, to get any sort of result, even now, at Old Trafford is uh, it's hard going. But, you know, I, I would never write them off. They're only six points off the lead now, and they've got to play some of them teams at the mm. top there. So uh, I think by Christmas, you know, come end of January, I think we'll be talking about Man United to be one of the favourites to uh, get the title. It's Liverpool year. and Arsenal next for Manchester United, and we'll see them both live on Sky Sports. This afternoon, it's Charlton and Blackburn Rovers. Let's have a word with the commentators, Andy Gray and Martin Tyler.
Well, Richard, I should imagine Charlton fans be quite pleased to see us here because <laughs> the, the four home points that they've got this season have all been in front of the Sky cameras. Well, we've got the classic one today. We've got a team that can't win at home against a team that's got an incredibly good away record. Only lost one game, I think, away at Chelsea, Blackburn Rovers, so they've got a fantastic away record. Um, against a team, uh, Alan Kirby, who will take 1-0 again, I'm sure 1-0, 1-1, anything like that to keep Charlton just ticking away, Martin, would, would do for Alan. Blackburn are interesting because the Grand Sooners has made the great stress about surviving in mm. the Premiership, but you look at the squad and you think, well, well maybe better than that, but, but they should be more ambitious. I think he is more ambitious. I think Graham's first priority is survival. 42, 43 points, whatever it is, I think as soon as they get them, I think you'll see Graham Sinest then start to make bigger targets and higher targets for his side to finish in the top 10, then top 8, then top 6 if they can. Um, knowing Graham Sinest the way I do, he won't just be satisfied, Martin. I don't think you'll agree with me with surviving in the Premiership with Blackburn Rovers. Good results for Charlton, though, yes. Uh, the sides have been uh, I think all lost but Bolton, who were winning and then, of course, got pegged back in the last minute. So an opportunity to push on really maybe away from that uh, bottom quartet they need to start winning there's absolutely no doubt about that Alan's side have been poor at home haven't got enough points really struggling to score goals all over the pitch you look at the, the squad today that are playing and there's hardly a premiership goal between them five or six goals and the, the ten outfield players I think we've got today so that shows you the, the measure of the problem the nature of the problems but I think it's funny how if you get one how they just start to come along and I think Alan I'll be saying now Listen, lads, it's about time we started winning at home, and I think he's got to do that. There comes a time when a manager has to start demanding. I think that time's probably now for Charlton players. It's about time we hand it back to Richard. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the Valley with Charlton and Blackburn Rovers. Four points, as Martin was saying. That's their return here this season. They need more. Fast. Nick, Nick. <laughs> when we come back, the Valley then... Ten years back when Charlton came home and now. And next up we'll be taking a closer look around the place. On a Super Sunday with Charlton and Blackburn Rovers. Charlton with just the one home win all season. Blackburn have been beaten just the once on the road. And the last time they were in the capital, they won at Arsenal. Next week pay-per-view game looks like this. the form team in the country right now. Newcastle coming off the back of a very important week in Europe. It's a later start than usual, two o'clock next Sunday. That's the Barker Card Premiership pay-per-view game. A little later, we'll be having a look around the valley as it was right now, as it is. In 1992, the capacity was 12,300. Today, it's 26,800. Our £10 million North Stand was funded by a grant given to the London Leisure College. The college employs upwards of 50 staff covering over 150 different courses.
See, not a lot of people know that. A genuine seat of learning with the college at the back in the north stand there. They've come a long way in the ten years since they came back to the valley, uh, much of which I think you were watching there you didn't know either, did you? No, that's right. I mean, uh, I knew the gymnasium was there and uh, Floyd's Bar and stuff, but... Uh, oh, the bar. You knew the bar was there. Well, uh, yeah, I'd seen it from the outside. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now I think it's magnificent the way that uh, things have changed here and, and certainly the supporters have, have turned up here and got behind the team and uh, as players and as a team we want to give something back to them and, uh, and obviously try and improve our results. Yeah, we'll talk more about it later, but uh, I mean, you just mentioned to Tim there are plans to complete the bowl and, and, and finish this end off, and, and Tim was wondering, can you fill it? But I think you probably would, wouldn't you, 30,000 plus? You are at the minute. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, there's a rumour they're going to uh, make it bigger, um, but I've been certainly very impressed by the, the support, really. Um, and I think pretty much every home game has been sold out, so why not? I mean, let's make it bigger and, and see uh, how many more we can get in. Which, of course, why it's an absolute necessity that Charlton survive in the Premiership, but it's just four points from their home games so far this season, and we've been here to see them pick them up. Charlton very much in need of their first home points of the season. Klaus Jensen is eyeing up the possibilities. Oh, the direct route. And Yule has given Charlton the lead inside five minutes. Jensen, good angle for Robinson. Yule, good stop by Schwarzer. In comes Powell. Greening. And for Flo, what a shot. Sunderland lead at the valley. Robinson. Jensen. It was Stephen Wright who was Sunderland's saviour. Kilbad is leaving Muster. Oh, and it's against the frame of the goal via Kylie. Fisher stayed forward. Ewell! Well, they were queuing up to put it in, and the man who did it was Gary Rowett. It is 1 1. Six attempts so far, just the one win. We saw it against Middlesbrough. One draw, we saw that against Sunderland. It's the goals scored, or rather the lack of them, Robbie, that's been the problem, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Um, we haven't taken chances. Certainly I can remember some games away from home that we had great chances to score and uh, get back into matches. We haven't taken them. We've given away quite a lot of daft goals, really. Avoidable goals. Um, that's something that we need to sort out and uh, hopefully we can get scoring again. Is it easier to play away from home at the moment than it is here at the Valley? I wouldn't say so. I think, in general, uh, the fans have been really behind us here. It's been, it's been good atmospheres. and. Certainly, I've played in teams before where you, you, you know it's very nervous at home, and the, and the fans are nervous, and the team's nervous. But I think Kerbyshire set us out with um, real determination, and, and we're fired up. And we want to get results, and we want to get stuck in. The fans have got behind us, so I wouldn't say that. I think it's, we've had some difficult games at home, um, and it's now really against Blackburn, and we maybe should have done better against Sunderland. But we need, do need to start winning games now, and I think Andy's right. Uh, it is up to us now to start winning games at home a bit more. Well, here is the manager. Of course, Charlton won at Main Road last week, but once again, injuries have affected his team selection. I've been saying for some time that I've got a, a strong squad and a big squad, um, but at the moment we've got 16 senior players here today, and that's it. You know, they're, they're, they're the ones that are fit. Uh, no disrespect to anybody, um, but you know, I'm sure that they're all going to come in. The ones that come in today will, will do what they've got to do. Goals have been a problem. What's been the worst thing? Is it not creating chances or is it not taking those chances? No, I don't think we've created too many. Um, and the ones we have in recent weeks seem to all fall to, to Sean Bartlett, and I'm glad to say he's took a couple recently. But uh, no, I can't blame the forwards for, for, for that. Uh, it's the whole team. We haven't uh, created too many chances. But on the other hand, we haven't let too many in. And, um, you know, it's a fine line. 
so certainly this Premiership where it's, every game so tough. Um, but I've asked in recent weeks to see if we can get some more bodies in that box, get some more balls in that box. And they've they've responded. And uh, we didn't do too bad up at Everton. Got a result against Man City. So let's hope we can carry it on today. Should that be easier at home to, to, to press forward more? Well, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult for the home side because the away team come and sit back and uh, there's a lot of counter-attacking in a Premiership. But, you know, we, we've come here today, seen results yesterday. Um, you know, can we put two wins together? We haven't done it all season. Uh, can we do it today? Because if we can, you can see what a boost it gives everybody and uh, there'll be a little bit of daylight between us and, and the other teams. So let's see if we can do it. But Blackburn have got a very good record against you of late. Yeah. What are you <laughs> expecting from them? Well, we know that, but I think, uh, as I've said in the programme, I think Graham's done a great job in uh, the time he's been there and uh, promotion and established himself in a Premiership, Weatherton Cup and uh, you know Europe this year. And he's bought very well. You know, people say that Blackburn have got the money, and yeah, he has spent money on York and Carl, if you like, which some of the other promoted sides can't do. But he's also gone down the scale. You know, Thompson's come in, uh, two guy, uh, Lucas Neal. You know, he's bought some good players. So uh, I've got great admiration for what he's done, and uh, I know that the results recently haven't uh, been uh, as, uh, as he would like it, but they're uh, a difficult side, and uh, we know we've got a game on our hands today. With all the injuries, what's the mood? Is it positive still? Yeah, I mean, it has been throughout, you know. I don't think any one of us have, have felt, uh, you know, pressure, if that's what everyone talks about nowadays. But it's too early for that. I'm just asking them to go out and do their best. And I think if anyone's seen us in recent months, we've given good account of ourselves, uh, but, you know, lost too many games, 1-0, 2-1. Um, can we turn that around? Because take the top six out of it, it is a tight old league and um, as we've said uh, on plenty of occasions put two results together you can move up that league. Wish you the best. Thank you. Thanks. What would or what should Blackburn be thinking about by way of a successful season? What would they take? I think the expectancy up there is not too great at the moment you know they, they've had the relegation they got back up and uh, just to stabilise it, I think, is a realistic target for them. Maybe mid-table, if they have a great run, which they're capable of doing with the players they've got, they maybe reach a UEFA spot. But, you know, there's a lot of good teams in this division, and to, to reach that top five, which is UEFA spot, is very difficult to do. Are they ever going to rejoin that elite top three or four? I don't know. I mean, it's going to be very difficult. I mean, how is anyone going to join that three or four? It's, it's catch up all the time. You know, they're they're going further ahead, and and the other teams are just trying to hang on to their coattails. And I think I mean, at the moment, you look at the table and you see Everton up there, but you know they're doing very well. But I mean, you have to be realistic and say that's a false position for them at the moment. And come April, you know, we'll see if they're still there. But you know, for Blackburn to finish mid-table and maybe a cup run. Yeah, I've had a little taste of Europe, you know, they're doing okay. Does that fill you with even more pride when sometimes you sit back quietly and think, hey, you know, we won this championship, Blackburn mixed it with Manchester United and nicked it one season as well? It was, like I said earlier, it was a tremendous feeling and a great achievement for the club and, uh, you know, we got a lot to thank Jack Walker for, you know, he was a, a legend out there, he still is and, uh, you know, God rest his soul, but at the end of the day, he'd give us that, ta that championship. We had to work hard for it, but we had, you know, with Jack's money, we brought in good players and, and he brought in a good manager. And uh, we just, we had the team spirit and we went on and uh, really was unbeatable that year. Well, Brad Friedel's been unbeatable in recent weeks for Blackburn Rovers, but he doesn't play today. He's injured, as we know. Alan Kelly gets a rare opportunity. It's Dean Kiley at the other end, two Irish international colleagues, and they've been talking with Jeff Shreves. Chaps, is it good to get together for an Irish reunion? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a good game for us. Obviously, you know, Cal's playing and myself. It's, uh, you know, it's a premiership game and it's uh, very, very important. So, yeah, I think, I think we're both looking forward to it, yeah. Alan, how much are you looking for, if I can say respectfully, a, a rare outing? Yeah, it is for myself, but uh, yeah, it's great to be involved in the Premiership and to, to get an outing, and especially live and Sky as well. It's a great occasion. Like I said, it don't happen too often for me, but uh, it's nice to see Dean again, you know, coming back from the World Cup. We haven't seen each other since then, so uh, we'll have a few words and maybe a beer after. So despite what people say, there is great camaraderie amongst the Irish. Yeah, I mean, as it worked out for the keepers, uh, you know, uh, Alan, Shane, myself, we went out there, we worked very well together. Uh, on and off the pitch, we got on really well socially, and uh, we're best of friends, which is uh, which is a good way to be and, and, and approach things, you know. So it's uh, it's, it's a very good uh, way to go on. 
I've never quite understood that as keepers, why you help each other when you all want to be number one in training. How does that work? I think she realised that it's, it's such an important position, you know, that uh, obviously if you make a mistake it's a goal and we all understand that only one person can uh, get that position and that's why everybody's got to help him to, you know, to do the best he can. Um, you know, the three of us were out there, we say we got on really well um, and we trained really well together, you know, and it's about, uh, you know, the chemistry and as long as you've got three good personalities there, then it should all be well, you know, and it, it went well for us in the World Cup, she was outstanding and uh, either myself or Dean were ready to go in, you know, so uh, that worked well for the for the, the whole of the Irish squad at that time and, and obviously himself and Shane, Nicky Colgan will keep it going. When was the last time you came up against each other, or have you? Yeah, many a yeah. Yeah, uh, when I was at Bury and, and Cal was at Sheffield United, we've uh, came across each other a lot of times. I don't know uh, who's ahead or whatever, but we'll call it even, shall we? <laughs> they are different, aren't they, goalkeepers? They do have their own union. Yeah, they are different, and uh, I think, to be fair though, Dino's probably one of the more normal ones that I've uh, played with. Um, they're usually a little bit crazy and a bit uh, too brave for their own good sometimes, but Dino's a lovely lad and a very good keeper. I've been very impressed with him uh, since I've been here. We are at the Valley with Charlton and Blackburn Rovers. And as Alan Kirby was saying, two wins in this league and you are motoring. They won last week at Main Road. They need something else here today. When we come back, we'll be hearing from Blackburn's Pocket Rocket. And next up, taking a look around the Valley as it was 10 years back when Charlton came home. Charlton and Blackburn now on a Super Sunday. And despite the fact it's been an indifferent season, Charlton are still selling the Valley out. Next Super Sunday, it's an earlier start than usual, but what a game. Next Sunday, 11.30 start, which is why the pay-per-view game kicks off a little later. 11.30 in the morning. Next Sunday, Liverpool play Manchester United live here on Sky Sports 1. Now then, it's one of football's fairy tales, really. Charlton, who were the original travellers, playing football back here at the Valley. Ten years on, as it were. Seventeen years back, after a lot of infighting around here, they had to shut the gates. Jeff Shreves takes up the story. Charlton Athletic's Valley Stadium was once the envy of a footballing nation. A magnificent arena regularly packed with over 70,000 loyal fans. The terracing was absolutely vast, you know, and you could see wherever you was, the vantage points were incredible, you know. There was no stanchions and that in the way, obviously, you know. If you had 45, 50,000 in there, it was almost empty. It was that kind of atmosphere. And it was always a good, friendly atmosphere because there was no segregation or anything like that. You get all your fans mixed together. You give, you got your banter and everything else like that. At the end of the game, you shook hands whether you won or lost, and that was it, you know? The covered end, which was the North Stand now, um, that was uh, just a nice place to be. And I actually sit roughly where I used to stand when I was a kid. But the empire was crumbling, and the warning signs of dwindling attendances had a disrupting effect on the players of the time. Sometimes it was better to play on the evening matches where you couldn't see the crowd so much and uh, you know, it was a bit dark on the terracing. Um, on a Saturday afternoon, if perhaps uh, there was a poor crowd and you had seven, eight, nine thousand, it, it did affect us, there's no doubt about it. But on the good, you know, the local derbies when 30,000 turned up, we played Chelsea or Crystal Palace and uh, the odd time the Arse or West Ham, um, that made it a bit special. In the 80s, the ground was inevitably closed down and the addicts were forced into exile at West Ham and Crystal Palace. But the homesick fans were determined. Although we wasn't well supported at Sadhouse Park and Upton Park, you know, they never gave up. They never gave up the fact that we were going to get back to the valley. I think uh, lesser fans may have given up the ghost long before and just accepted 
things weren't going to be the way they used to be and a part of history would be, less, be lost, you know. Um, that didn't happen. If we were all on our hands and knees clearing those terraces, there was tree, trees springing up in the middle of the pitch and everything else. Oh, there was a big involvement as well. Many, many fans down there. At last, on December the 5th, 1992, after seven years away, Charlton came home. It was a great atmosphere. Uh, win, lose or draw, I don't think any fan would really care that day. The, the whole objective was us going through those gates. But I think the emotion of the day just took over every single person that came to that game. There's absolutely no way that Portsmouth were going to win that day. Uh, it was our game, it was our day. And we went on and got a 1-0 result. The joy on, on everybody's faces. The next time uh, I saw that was when we actually came from Ocean. But there was a price to pay for moving back. We'd lose people like Scott Minto, Robert Lee in particular, that I remember. And, uh, you know, that was very, very costly at the time because probably it meant during those, the early 90s, mid 90s, we perhaps we could have had a real chance of promotion and we lost someone like Robert Lee who was a key player. It had to be done. There was no other way. There was, there was lots of sacrifices being made at the time. Getting back to the Valley was more important probably than us ever gaining promotion because getting back to the Valley uh, enabled us to be a football club again. We wasn't a football club. You know, we was playing at other people's grounds. Um, lost a generation of fans to other London clubs, if you like. Um, we was never going to be a football club again until we got back to the Valley. And um, I think we can call ourselves a football club now. The next step is really to completely consolidate in the Premiership and then say, well, you know, into that top sort of six or eight positions where you could eventually get into Europe. To see European football at the Valley would be absolutely marvellous. I'd like to think that the next step for us is uh, to develop the, the final part of the ground, um, you know, make it a, a 30 odd thousand all seater wrap round stadium and obviously be a Premiership club. I think if I look back and uh, that is achieved, um, I'll be uh, mightily uh, proud of everything that's gone on at Charlton over the last 10 years. celebrate 10 years back at the Valley this coming December. It's a great football tale. Um, probably, almost certainly never happened again. But they worked enduringly hard during their spell away, not just to get back here, but then to develop what is a very, very good football stadium. Robbie Musto is with us this afternoon, Tim Sherwood as well. And there is, what Robbie, we said right at the start of the show, if, 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 if you can continue to extend, it would appear that there's enough people in this part of the world who want to come and watch top-class football here. But delivering the top-class football is paramount, isn't it? It definitely is, and uh, I'm sure there is people that want to come, and, and extra people that would come. But we have to remain in the Premier League and, and, and produce good performances to make them keep coming. And um, their support is fantastic, and it drives the team forward. But we must keep it going. and, and, and Again, the results are so important that, that we remain in the Premiership. Well, let's find out what they're thinking. It was Pye and Mash with Jeff Shrees when we were in the East End last week. What's on the agenda this week? Richard, for my pre-match meal this week, I'm down at the Valley Cafe, where quite a few of the Charlton fans meet before a home game. So let's nip inside and have a chat with them and see what they've got on their minds. With the home form the way it is at the moment, I'm sure they're hoping for a feast of goals, but they might not be lucky. Oh, a bit of a squeeze. In you come. Afternoon, uh, you going to the game today? Certainly am. Come up from uh, Somerset for the day. Left home at half past eight this morning, so looking forward to it. That's a long way to come see Charlton playing at home, because it's not going right at the moment, is it? It isn't really. We've already won one game at home for, for a few months now, but uh, hopefully we can get it right today and uh, get three, three points on the, on the, in the scoreboard. What do you think the problem is? Um, I just think lack of firepower, really. I don't think Herb has got the tactics right. Um, you know, I think what he played against Man City seems to have been working, and hopefully he'll continue it. Right, I'll leave you to your pre-match meal, it looks pretty lovely, just move along here. Good afternoon, um, well, I, I don't think you should eat that much before a game, but <laughs> what are you hoping for this afternoon? Um, well, obviously I'd like to see a win, but I think if we can get a draw this afternoon, that, that, will, that will be a good result for us. I mean, what has happened at the Valley, for so long that you wanted to come back here, you're back here now and you just can't get that win? 
I think we're a, a well-organised team, and you know, defensively, I think we're doing okay. I think the problem is it's very hard to uh, to keep that going for 90 minutes, and if we make one mistake, um, we're then sort of like we've then got an uphill struggle. You know, we're um, we're finding it hard to score goals. So, you know, one mistake and, and one goal going in, and, and we're already in danger of losing a game. Right. It's three of the four defeats here this season have been against Chelsea, Manchester United, and Arsenal. So it, I don't think it's as bad as it looks. We got the easy ones to come. <laughs> Too early to panic, as far as you're concerned. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think um, uh, letting Kinsella go and then losing Graham Stewart with injury um, was a, you know, was a bit of a problem. Uh, but I think now they're getting players back to fitness. I think we're going to be all right now, and they're showing signs of of picking up some form. Good, still confident. Three points today. Three points today. Let's see. We just uh, nip over here. Some more Charlton fans just here. Hello. Are you confident for today? Yes. Yep. Desperately need three points today, especially with the way that the results went yesterday. So um, we definitely need it for sure. But the Charlton fans are a pretty solid group, aren't they? You haven't been getting on the manager's back. Is it a case of we're all in this together? Very much so. That's uh, that's the kind of thing the club's been built on over the years. So uh, it's very much uh, it's not an us and them situation down here. We are all in it together. Well, that's what you like to hear in the trenches when things aren't going right. Back to you, Richard, to find out whether or not it goes the Charlton fans' way. Robbie Musto is with us, Tim Sherwood as well. Let's talk a little about Blackburn Rovers. Andy Cole starts, Dwight York doesn't. He's left on the bench. Oshtenstadt is Cole's partner. Why, in your opinion, is that the case? Uh, maybe it gives um, Blackburn something a little bit different. You know, he's a big target man, Oshtenstadt, and uh, I think he's prepared to run the channels a little bit more than, than the other two we mentioned. And... Um, you know, perhaps it worked for him. You know, who can? Uh, I can't really argue with uh, Graham Sooners. No. What would your defenders rather see? A team sheet that reads Cole and York, or without any disrespect to Oshtenstad, Cole and Oshtenstad? Probably the latter. Yeah. Um, but again, I can understand he's a big, strong lad who works very hard, and our centre halves are particularly good at getting nice and tight to people who do come off to feet for a lot of the time. So. Maybe he's thinking he will run the channels and, and stretch our uh, defenders a little bit more. So it'll be interesting to see how it pans out. David Thompson has made himself something of a fixture at Blackburn Rovers. He's also on the fringe of the England setup now as well, isn't he? A player who started his career with Liverpool, so he's represented the Reds just like his manager. He's a combative, aggressive little fella, just like his manager. But that's where the similarity ends, it seems. No, I'm not like him. Uh, I know he's. Uh... He was a hell of a player. If I'm half as successful as he was, then, you know, I'll be all right. But I don't think uh, our styles are similar at all. In what ways are they different? Well, he liked to, he liked to tackle and, um, you know, get forward and, and, and score goals and, and dominate the opposition, whereas, you know, I like to just pass and move and, uh, you know, use a little bit of skill in the, in the right areas. Tackling's part of your game as well, though, David. I think I, I, think I can tackle and, uh, you know, I do like to impose myself on the opposition, but... No, I wouldn't say it was a great strength. I think uh, you know, got other qualities that have come to the fore a little bit more than that one. Did you have a role model when you were a young player? Um, I used to like watching Maradona, and uh, got a couple of videos of George Best, and uh, you know they were fantastic players. But I never tried to model myself on anyone. How would you describe yourself as a player? Um, so much somebody works hard and uh, you know never get gi never gives up and I wouldn't say I was spectacular. I'd never uh, really stand out in a game, but you know I think my teammates would appreciate me more than more than you know the opposition would. And I'm not I'm not exceptionally good at, at attacking. I'm not exceptionally good at defending, but you know I'm steady at both and uh, you know it's it's to try and get up there with assists and try and stop as many goals going in at the other end. Do you have a reputation? Do you think? Um, as well. Well, I don't know. I mean, a couple of sendings off, being a, a bit too combative. No, I don't think so. I mean, I'm not. I'm not dirty. I'm not nasty. I've never been sent off at elbow and or, or stuff like that. But uh, you know, the only bookings and sending offs I've ever had, I would say, would <coughs> would would probably only be for over enthusiasm. You know, wanting to do well. And uh, I think sometimes when I was playing for Liverpool, I think the occasion probably used to get the better of me. You've been part of the England squad as well this season. What do you think you've, you've got out of being with the squad for those two sessions? One for um, Macedonia and one for the get-together? I think when I, when I was given the chance to go down there, I think one of the biggest things was to show the manager that I had a good attitude. I think it's difficult to go down there, especially just in the training ses sessions, to show what you can do. I think the manager already knows what you can do ability-wise, so I think 
more than anything, that's a chance to have a look at your attitude. And what did you think you showed him? I think I just showed him that I had a good attitude and, um, you know, that I work hard and, um, you know, I'm a good crack to have around. Well, he's certainly not big enough to knock people over, is he? David Thompson of Blackburn Rovers, formerly of Coventry and Liverpool, of course. Is he the sort of competitor you like in your side, Robbie? Definitely, yeah. I mean, it's uh, came through quite strongly there how determined he is in his play. And uh, sometimes players with real good ability don't always have that. Um, and again, he mentioned about working hard. It's just so important, I think, for, for wide players. They've got a good ability to work hard with it and have that determination in their play. And it's exactly what he's got. He's a rarity as well, Tim, because he's a wide player that appears to enjoy playing wide. Most want to come and play inside, yeah. don't they? I think he just wants to play. I mean, I get the impression that he's, he's, he, when we see him play, he's just busy, you know, and he's a crowd favourite. They like players like that who are going to get busy, give 100%, and, you know, he's just a uh, pain in the arse, really. <laughs> in the nicest possible sense. I understand what you mean. Here's the manager, Graham Sunes, who's been away this week. Did you see anything you might like in the January sales? <laughs> sales, there's no sales. Uh, I saw a good, I saw a good game of football. Um, it was interesting. The players we went to see perform well on a night, so we're giving our directors some headaches. Hopefully, in the near future, ask them for some money. Is that what it's all about now? Getting ready for January? Well, it's not. Um, you know, I don't think anybody in, um, who's managing goes out and makes the decision um, on seeing a player once. You know, there's a, a lot of homework put into it. Um, and hopefully in January um, we can go out and maybe strengthen our squad. But I think every manager is looking to do that. Yes, there's a fair bit of you know, looking and asking the right questions. It's Charlton today. Are you happier on your travels? Um, well, the results would suggest so. I mean, we've um, although we played very well against Everton last week uh, in the second half, uh, we got nothing from the game. A game in which we felt we should have at least taken a point. Um, if we had won last week, we would have been fourth in the table. But instead, we're now eighth, and we're now dropping back into a very dangerous area. Um, you know, if you're if you're going well, you're playing with a great deal of confidence. Things happen for you. You know, you don't have to fight and struggle for things. And we want, we're trying this season not to drop into a dangerous area where, like we were last year, playing for three or four months of the year under pressure, because you don't. Some people don't perform at the best when they're in that situation. So today's a big result for us. You know, it's a big game for us. And if we can get any sort of result at all, today, it'll be a big one. Charlton had a good result at City last week, so we know it's not, it's not going to be an easy game for us. But, um, yeah, we, we need the points today. No Dwight York. Why is that? Well, it's just uh, I think we have to be fair to Egel. Um, Egel has come in and done very well. Um, Egel has, has come back from the dead, if you like, because he hadn't... He hadn't played for us for a long period up until um, I think it was a Leeds game at home and he gives us some forward movement um, he gives us something slightly different to what, what um, Yorkie gives us but you, you'll see Dwight sometime during the game today. Andy Todd famously clashed with Dean Kiley what sort of reception do you think he'll get both from the Charlton players and fans? Um, well I don't know I don't know how um, they'll um, welcome him but I don't think it's, if it's if it's a negative one, if it's a hostile one, it's not going to bother him. He's a very strong character. Um, he's a stubborn character, and um, either way it goes for him, um, he'll play to the best of his ability. It's not going to be how the crowd react to him, and it's going to influence his performance. More trouble for Leeds United, beaten at White Hart Lane today, 2-0. Sheringham and Robbie Keane, almost inevitably the scorer of those goals. Uh, here it's Charlton against Blackburn Rovers, who are unbeaten Rovers in the four Premiership meetings. They completed the double over Charlton last season. They've won on their last two visits here. They're unbeaten in five on Charlton territory. Charlton's last win against them, April 86 at Selhurst Park. 3-0 in the old second division. Their last win at the Valley, April 85, by a goal to nil. Mark Azelwood, the goal scorer, and Alan Kerbishley played in that game. That's how long ago that was. A 1985 incidentally, not 1885. What do we fancy today? Well, I'm confident. I think we're going to win 2-0. I think uh, things are turning for us. The lads are starting to, to seem more confident in training. We had a good win last week. So uh, I'm hopeful of a win. Semi-neutral, Tim? Uh, you fancy? I think um, 
it's going to be a tight game. Whenever you come, from my experience, whenever you come and play here, you have to work for your result. I know they haven't got a great record at home, but teams, when they come here, if they're going to win, they're going to have to work hard for it. And I think Blackburn maybe have the players to edge it, you know, on something might happen just on a one-off, and like Damien Duff, for instance, and it could turn the game. OK, it may be 10 years on, but there is also a pride factor here. Charlton are playing their football at home again. We heard the story earlier of how the gates were shut 17 years back. But this is how the valley once looked. Then Charlton came home. And despite the fact they're struggling a bit this season, this could be another pleasant valley Sunday. Charlton and Blackburn Rovers, smiles all round, Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. We were just uh, trying to guess, was it the monkeys who sang that? Well, that's your era more than mine, <laughs> mate. I mean, I'm about your vast experience in that kind of music. <laughs> Actually, uh, viewers, I've got to look after Andy today. He's a bit under the weather. You're going to get through the 90 minutes, OK? Absolutely. Not a lot of football match, mate, and a weekend to keep you going. Adrenaline. Absolutely. Let's look at the teams for you. Alan Kirbishley's wish to keep the same side that won at Manchester City, wrecked by training ground injuries to Jonathan Johansson and Gary Rowett, and hopes that the gifted midfield player Klaus Jensen might be fit to return, also dashed. Add to that the ruling out of the two transfer deadline signings, Robbie Musto and Jesper Blomqvist. There's the long-term absence of Graham Stewart as well, and John Robinson is absent today because of family reasons. So it is a bare-bones scenario for Charlton, into the starting 11, defender John Fortune and striker Kevin Lisby. Brad Friedel's fantastic year has taken its toll on the USA goalkeeper. Knee surgery the result, though he could be back next week. Alan Kelly, an international himself, should be a capable deputy. Back four unchanged, although the fullbacks are switched. There's an interesting selection which we pointed out to you already. Andy Todd in midfield. He left Charlton under something of a cloud. And he starts his first Premiership game since then. Tom's needed because Gary Flitcroft is not quite ready for a return. And two guy is suspended. Well, Alan Kirkus, you know, Martin, is sticking with this formation. I think when we did our first of the trio of games, they changed it for the first time to a back three, a back five, whatever you want to call it. And I think since then they really have tightened it up at the back. They don't concede an awful lot of goals now. They're nice and tight. And that's mainly because these three here, I think, get themselves in really good positions. They defend nice and deep when they need to, keep a good line up the pitch. They don't allow people to run in between them. They're ably supported by two wing-backs, as we call them, who are pretty good defenders. But today, I think you need to see a bit more of Luke Young and a bit more of Chris Pearl this high up the pitch so that they can go and impose themselves on the game. Because certainly with Jason Ewell playing from here, making runs forward, he could definitely be a threat. I like Scott Parker, good footballer. He will get forward, and I just think what they've got to do then is Kishishev really has a role here to be probably the holding player of the trio in midfield, and the front two will definitely need service. For Blackburn, well, it's pretty much a tried and trusted formation for Graham Sunez. He likes four at the back, he likes four in midfield, and he likes two up top, so it's just a matter of who played where. He is missing Henning Berg and uh, Martin Taylor from his defensive options, so uh, it's not just Charlton who've got the injury problems. Oh, no, he's got pro he has got problems, no doubt about that. And Andy Todd is an interesting one, picked in the centre midfield. But I think that, that is mainly because of all of these players in here, Todd's the more defensive-minded, because Thompson likes to get forward, Dunn likes to get forward, Duff likes to get forward, and when you're away from home, you really need someone to sit, just back the play up, not get ahead of the ball, and I think Andy Todd will do that. The front two, well, I think the selection's quite simple. Andy Cole loves to pull to the ball, loves to get it to feet. So does Dwight York, and what Graham was saying is, he feels that Austin Stat will run this way. He will run forward, in behind and over the top, and the mix is better. That's what he's hoping for. Yorkie says he's got tight hamstrings as well, so uh, <laughs> that's probably contributed to the decision, although uh, 
He is a substitute. Blackburn have won at Birmingham, at West Brom and of course Arsenal. But since those Highbury heroics, no victories in any of three Premiership games. They've lost that so-called Battle of Britain to Celtic and only squeezed past Division 1 Walsall via a penalty shootout at the start of their bid to retain the Worthington Cup. The Charlton come back to the Valley believing they were good value in their taking the wind out of Manchester City's sails last weekend. But they haven't won a second league game in a row since New Year's Day. Alan Kelly, it's uh, good to see him getting a game in the Premiership. He's a very popular, likeable guy. And of course, the great goalkeeping is stock. His father of the same name also represented the Republic of Ireland, played in a cup final for Preston back in the 60s. But Brad Friedel has been a big presence, hasn't he, Andy, for Blackburn? Magnificent. You know, I, I, I talked earlier about Brad, and Graves and thinks he's the best at the moment in the Premiership. I certainly think he's in the top four, Martin. I'm not so sure he's, he's the best, but there ain't a lot in it. And you can bet that Graves and would rather come into this game with Brad in, in goal than not. But when you look at, you know, Charlton, I'm looking at eight of the outfield players, Martin, looking for the first Premiership goal of the season. That's a measure of the problems that they have at the moment. Yes, yeah, so and the point about... Uh, it's not missing chances, it's no. the lack of making them that's the big concern. They're led out by Richard Rufus, Charlton through and through. Over 300 appearances for the club. David Dunn and Luke Young, great mates from the England under-21 setup. We finally got some officials. And David Dunn's a, a bubbly character radiates confidence sometimes there can be a little bit misplaced but it's a game that he can certainly influence here at the valley today and if alan kelly's playing occasionally these days dean kiley week in week out keeps goal for charlton athletic charlton with a chance to go four points clear of the bottom three but blackburn were victorious at the valley last season it's live for you, right after the break. We're at the Valley for a Super Sunday with Charlton Athletic and Blackburn Rovers. Sky Digital viewers can enjoy eight mini screens in the various interactive facilities. Push the red button on your remote control and follow the menu instructions. Player cam is there, also Fan Zone. Commentating today for Charlton, Mark Adkins, Phil Hayward representing Blackburn Rovers. Andy Todd is our first feature of player camp. Match commentators Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Charlton looking for the togetherness to try to uh, improve on this rather parlous home record. But they have beaten Middlesbrough and drawn with Sunderland for a run of defeats. The problem they have is they just don't get enough goals. Five in their last ten Premiership games, only five in seven games here this season. And even Division Three, Oxford United shut them out. Not just 90 minutes, but extra time as well. Fish. And Kishy Chef. Touched by Lisbeth. And some covering with his right foot from left back by Lucas Neal, who has been the regular right back, but John Curtis also uh, prefers that position, and Curtis gets the uh, start on the right-hand side. Former Manchester United player. Bartley trying to get in at the near post. Early work for Alan Kelly, who was a regular in the first two seasons of the Premiership in goal for Sheffield United. Since then, he's played only two games at this level, Blackburn's last two matches of last season. Freely was away preparing for the World Cup. Of course, Kelly went to the World Cup with the Republic of Ireland, as did his opposite number today, Dean Kiley. 
Uh, we've already seen a couple of times what an advanced position Jason Newell's taken, Martin. He's almost leaving Parker and Kishishev as the two deeper midfield players. He's just taking the position sort of in between them and the two front men. Fish climbing about Verstappen's back. Bartlett didn't quite get that. That's work from Niels Erik Johansson. Blackburn Johansson is playing, the champ Johansson isn't. He's been training on Friday morning. Charlton have never beaten Blackburn Rovers at home in the top division of English football. They have never even scored a goal against them at home in the top division of English football. showing that he can do the midfielders tackling as well he's no stranger to playing in that position he did it to Wimbledon Andy Cole trying to lead the Rufus across the ball squirted into the penalty area another very good crowd at the Valley they invariably sell out here and although there are some floating football fans in London plenty of them we like to see a good game you just feel here that the people are Charlton to the court We've been here the last two home games, Martin. They've certainly been noisy enough. I don't think the players could have asked for any more from the support they've had. Just waiting for it to drop. Alan Kerbishley, as well as Graham Souness, uh, away in Europe scouting yesterday, taking advantage of a free Saturday. And well aware of the proximity of the opening of the transfer restrictions in January. from the Blackburn point of view I think it's defenders that they're looking at no surprise for Charlton at the <laughs> other end of the pitch by chance striker yes yeah. yeah. Lisby plays today he's bright and quick but he's maybe not the most natural finisher Masterstad <laughs> who's really come in from the cold this season, he seemed to be well out of Graham soon as he's thinking. Done. Making space for himself cleverly. Awkward for Rufus. And uh, Cole settles for the corner. Very awkward. In fact, it's sat up from him, that's the problem. Just skipped up about a yard in front of him. Did enough. That was great play, though, from David Dunn. First real little glimpse we've seen of him. Duff. When you look at the players I've got, Martin, you often, I mean, I'm not surprised you've got a, a good away record when you look at the likes of Thompson, Duff, Dunn. They're all very quick players, all nimble across the grass. Andy Cole up front, whose pace off should tackle running behind. Perhaps it's no surprise then that they do catch teams. And certainly crowding Kylie at the moment. Austin Stat and Short and representation. And, uh, short in another sense was the corner. Thompson tries again. This is Chef who played for Bulgaria in midweek. Captained them and lost 1 0 to Spain. Neil. Here's Dunn. Is, uh, Curtis oh, working a little wider. And Nicole again. Not in too much of a hurry, but backed up by Neil. Duff. Trying to double up on him, Charlton. He must be used to that now, Damien Duff. Marvellous dribbling skills. Initially stayed in play down by Kylie's near post. In fact, it has uh, totally stayed in play. But there's a little cameo of the problems Chalk can expect from the Republic of Ireland international duff. Well, look, Young won't want to see too much of that today, will he? This right-hand side. And the trouble at times, man, when you play a back five as it is, a, 
almost certainly three across the back and two wing backs. As often wing backs get isolated, you know, 1v1. So I think Kishishev in particular has got a big job to come from infield out to help Luke Young whenever Duff gets the ball. I think Duff will fancy 1v1 against Young. Damien Duff was a scorer in Blackburn's win here last season. The other goal came from David Dunn. Double dose of the DDs. Thompson, not for lock. Powell, attractive. Early from Kishishev. Oh, it's headed down the, by Craig Short, straight as his own player, Andy Todd. It's allowed Yule something to fasten on to. from Alan Kelly that was it he was just so lazy with it but flew off the boot and then did a pitch to the other and Kelly again his results went right for Charlton yesterday with three of the teams below them West Ham, West Brom and Sunderland all losing and the other Bolton denied a morale boosting win by a late Chelsea equaliser if Chelsea were encouraging Duff to have a shot there with his weaker foot. I just think that's what I mean about the 1v1. We can go outside, inside. And I think Luke Young's got it all on. Kishishev. Okay. Not a chase for that one. Not quite as precise as Alan Kirbishley would have liked with the passing, but Charlton get the throw. <laughs> That's three in a row, little David Thompson. Yes, and he was it? saying in our interview that yeah. he's not a, a Graham Souness type tackler. He's got that much uh, size to throw into it, I guess, but I've uh, never seen him pull out of a challenge. And it's gone out. It's a little indication of the potential in Kevin Lisby's plays. Prepared to go at defenders, try and get to the byline. On that occasion, he went beyond it. Yeah, I just overdid it. I thought he had a glorious opportunity. He'd done the hard thing, he'd created himself a yard of space, but wanted an extra touch on it. Since assuming sole control in 1995, Alan Kirbyshire hasn't produced a winning team against Blackburn Rovers. This is his eighth attempt. And he's concerned here as a Cole. Almost gets past. Just about, wasn't it? A combination of Rufus and Fortune. Well, yeah, he got past Fortune. I think the fact and the important part was that Rufus come up, came across and managed to get half a block on the ball. It's raining again, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> the south of England is something like a swamp at the moment, so all credit to uh, Colin Powell, the former Charlton player, who's a groundsman here. The pitch is more than decent in the circumstances. Sure. Johansson. He was now a full international for Sweden. That presented them last week. Neil, the Australian. Top jump player. He's a surprise call up today. Short. Sure. Trying to get it wide, but it only went straight to Curtis. Todd. Both sides guilty of giving the ball away at the moment. Ten minutes gone. Charlton nil, Blackburn nil. Cole, second highest Premiership scorer of all time. It's Charlton's free kick. Well, I think it's so important today that Charlton defend well, Martin. I think when you look around the football pitch, I think the creative players, the majority of them, are all wearing blue and white today. I think Blackburn have got more creation in the side, and if they're allowed to do that, it could be a long day for Charlton. So it's important that the back three and the two wing backs keep it nice and tight as long as possible. 
Yeah. Ewell trying to sneak in. And, uh, oh, it's a corner. Toby Dunn seemed to let that run. It's he a goal kick. Yeah, he thought it was a goal kick. I mean, these are the sort of things that champ will pay an awful lot of attention to. When you're not creating chances in, when you get a set play, whether it be a free kick or a corner, then you pay an awful lot of attention to that. Goalkeeper's fist. Smack back by Fortune. Oh, helping uh, defending. It's quite a testing corner for Alan Kelly. The feeling about Egerlostan's stat was he just lost a bit of edge to his play. And soon as, of course, knew him from their days at Southampton. Edge back. It's amazing what a difference it makes, though, if you feel you actually wanted, Martin. I'm mm. sure when uh, York and Cole arrived and with Matt Janssen already there, he must have thought that his chances would be limited. Yeah. When we were last here, John Robinson played that wide position, more of a, an attacking winger-type player. Luke Young essentially defensive by nature. Parker. Fisher Chef. That's too much right. for Chris Powell. Yeah, he's asking just a bit too much. It's 28 Kisher Chef. He's coming up to 50 appearances for Charlton. Still looking for his first goal for the club. Fish. It's been a good weekend for scoring in the Barker Card Premiership. And the last of the round of fixtures been played out in front of you at the Valley. You missed the earlier news. Tottenham 2, Leeds United 0. Sheringham and Keane, the scorers. Well, the ball's there to go for. Andy Todd uh, took a bit of the man as well, the man being Parker. Rufus. Young. Fisher Chef. Parker. The deflection there that helped Charlton. Lisby made Parker turn. You're looking for the knockdown from Bartlett. Lisby slipped but still gets there. Turned into the tackle rather. Quick thinking at the free kick by Dunn. John Fortune's got plenty of pace, and uh, Alan Kirbishley has said when we've been here before recently, Fortune's been unlucky not to be in the side. Harry Rowett, the uh, damaged thigh muscle, so, uh, given the opportunity to Fortune for this one. Parker, yeah. Kevin Lisby's been away to Nigeria representing Jamaica over the past week so maybe we should get the player cam on him early <laughs> Sky Digital viewers via the red button on uh, your remote Bartlett of course has captain South Africa last Wednesday and scored against Senegal so he's had a long journey as well that was unlucky there's got a link up play there just got away from Scott Parker at the vital moment but promising. A bit of a complaint by David Thompson that 
Just Carl shoved him in the back. Ewell. And Sunis and the Sunis watchers will tell you he's a lot calmer these days, but everything is relative. And we've seen him sent from the bench already in a Premiership game this season. <laughs> yeah. in the game it's a little scrappy at the moment conditions are difficult he really is chucking it down Tisha Chef stuck out a leg tight control by Powell we all trying to get beyond Lisby but uh, very short very solid in the air and Thompson now maybe Blackburn can put some passes together here a bit of room in midfield that makes David Dunn's eyes light up and Thompson, Todd just playing it safe and sensibly doing a good job in that holding role so far Duff Neil she got to it the danger's not passed yet for Charlton and a swipe at it by Fish that was the worst ball I've seen delivered in lovely area the space for Duff if they can find him and Johansson's has done just that Chris Ball into the feet of Damien Duff by Neil Serrett Johansson and maybe Blackburn will feel they might have made a bit more of that. Dean Kiley went all the way to Athens as the backup to Shea Gibbon for Don Gibbons in the Republic of Ireland last week, didn't get into the game. of a, a corner it's a free kick from an angle that in theory helps the defenders it's another restart and the chance maybe to make something for Charlton Athletic slid off the shaven head of Rufus yeah they've got a few that can attack it now and can reach the side mark but I have to say that uh, they've got a pretty big back three anyway you take John Curtis out of it the other three lads are, are pretty formidable physically you know, it's just that going back makes it difficult. It's just a little quiet all round, I get the feeling today. You know, I think that win in road last week was just giving the fan maybe a little bit more expectancy. Yes, but the chance supporters uh, know their stuff here and they know that the team that's been put out isn't quite the one that aren't managed to sit here. That's why you do have a squad. Yep. Current assistant manager Keith Peacock has served Charlton as a player and coach for 30 odd years and he traces his love for the club back to being taken here at the age of 12 to match against Blackburn. Charlton needed to draw to win promotion back to Division 1. Blackburn won 4-3 and took that promotion place instead. So when Keith became a Charlton player, he took particular pleasure in scoring against Blackburn, which he did uh, several times. Sure, it'll be 4 3 today. <laughs> hey, listen, that's a bit of my great statement yesterday, yeah, early yes. on in the match. Old Trafford, I think it'll be tight and tense this one today. Well, it was for 20 minutes, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I should say that now, shouldn't I? Curtis has a passing interest in matters, Old Trafford. Duffer in the middle. The ball towards the near post might have suited Blackburn then. Oh, they've just stolen a yard or two. Well, they've done all right, Blackburn, up to the edge of the 18 yard box, moment, but they just quite haven't been able to put a pass together of, it, of any quality at the moment. That final pass has just been lacking as it was then. It's a chance for David Thompson. Wasn't under any real pressure, but rather overhit it. 
were playing really well a few weeks ago, Blackburn. You just uh, feel what happened at Parkhead. Might have uh, been a bit of a watershed in that they played so well against Celtic and lost 1 0 and didn't play so well in the home leg. And of course, we're palpably beaten at Ewood. Here goes Cole, past Fortune. And uh, Fish wasn't prepared to believe that Kylie might definitely deal with that. Headed on by Lisbeth. Good advantage played by referee Uriah Rennick. And then he had to give the free kick. Parker. On a day when you feel the first goal is uh, vitally important. Charlton trying to get it here with Jason Ewell. Bit of penalty area pinball. Andy Toy that can thump it against there, which is struck well enough. Dumb caught in possession by uh, Ewell. Back heel by Bartlett. Ewell, Lisby in the middle. Ewell might get it again. Well, pretty much the best bit of football chart to put together. And it's all, it all started because Ewell went and won the ball, Martin, but I think you might have played this a little earlier. Because when he eventually did, gap had been closed. I just thought they looked up when he first took possession, he might have fed it across. There was enough space. Lisbon was on his own. By the time he decided to play it, it had gone the space. Parker. Goalkeeper packs it out to Kishishev, looking for that first goal for Charlton. He's concentrating on trying to get it on the target as it dropped. I think it was as well. Mm. Oh, a couple of flurries from Charlton. This is more like the atmosphere that we have heard the last couple of times we've been here, Martin. They haven't quite started today, Charlton, the way they did the previous two games, where the, the start was really high tempo. They put loads of pressure on both Middlesbrough and Sunderland when they had the ball. They haven't done that as much today. Yeah, that might be a nasty one. But it's one of those that. He's just got to block it, Jason Newell. When the defender kicks the sole of his boot. The defender being Lucas Neal. Yeah. Happens time and again. I think, you know, much as I try and plead for a bit of leniency when someone does that, because I don't think they're trying to do players, Martin, in any shape or form. Referees just seem to think, well, we'll give them a yellow card. We'll just see if this might well have been gone, and he just tries to tuck it over there. Well, it might just have sneaked wide. Lucas and Neal it. taking no chances. That's the best five minutes they've had in the game, though, the last five. Charlton. <laughs> David Fever has done the necessary. It is painful, there's so many little bones in the top of your foot that I've done it myself. Oh yeah, I know, I knew you would use a word, yeah. <laughs> I only learnt it when it happened year. to one or two yeah. high-profile <laughs> players with England. Here's Andy Cole, whose England days are a thing of the past. Turning fortune! Oh, I have to see that. I think Andy Cole's every right to be annoyed at this. I don't think Fortune gets any of the ball at all here. The little drag back here is first class. Now, does Fortune get the ball? Not in the slightest. Not in the slightest. I think he's a lucky, lucky boy to get away with that. It's clumsy. The ref gives a goal kick, so he obviously doesn't think Fortune get any of the ball. That's a penalty. Ah, well, is that what I'm trying to say? Yeah, <laughs> that was just the one word missing from your rant. <laughs> That was kind. Oh, well, uh, fortunately for Mark Fish, the uh, tag was up. Must have stopped protesting about the decision. He must have thought that he turned in behind Fish. That's what it looked like. Yeah. Uh, you can only think he must have had a chunk of fish in his jersey, Martin. Yeah. Anyway, it's a free kick to Charlton. Blackburn supporters uh, on the left-hand end of the valley would have had a great view of that 
challenged by Fortune on Cole as well, and they were up and bellowing. Well, the referee had a pretty good look at it as well. He was edge of the box. He was no more than 16, 17 yards away from that. And it's calm on the bench. There's another, a bit like Oscar's that is coming back in from the cold. And Blackburn starting 11. Good delivery from Kelly to Neil. Duff, great early cross, magnificent cross. Just needed someone to arrive and tap it in. It was put into exactly the right areas. Well, we won't see a better cross than this today, I'm absolutely certain about that. Much like Solskjaer's yesterday, we saw Old Trafford from near post to back post, that could have been finished. Such was the quality on it. Everyone back for Charlton. The numbers do the trick in the end. I have to say, Richard Griffiths there looked like he had a huge chunk of Andy Cole's shirt there. As Cole went to try and head the ball. They do take a chance, defenders, they really do. by Eston Stapp. Dunn, shots on. Blocked by Rufus. Thompson shots on, but not on target. Yeah, the block just unfortunately straight back into Jonathan Fortune's face. Almost dropped <laughs> Thompson pretty well. A little deflection there, that would be painful. Just never came down for David Thompson. The referees now, uh, we call them professional these days, they have time to assess certain issues in the game and we've seen a couple here, haven't we? The, uh, the booking for Yule, as the defenders clear forwards try and close it down, plenty of examples of that this season. And also, as you say, defenders grabbing hold of attackers, all, uh, trying to mark up tight at corners and free kicks. Parker, Powell's cross, Bartlett's very good in the air, and up he gets, Lisby trying to back heel it in. Maybe a break on for Blackburn, Duff, looking again for Cole, who's begun this match in lively fashion, and... Uh, it's half decent. It was an awkward ball he had to deal with. I thought actually Damien Duff would just roll this into him, but he gets airborne for some reason. It's not sure what he's trying to do, but it was awkward for Andy Cole. But look how quick he was to react. He didn't control it very well. He lets it get away from him, but he reacts quickly. Almost manages to stab it past the goalkeeper. What he's always had, Andy Cole, is a great natural flexibility. Yeah. And that shows no signs of diminishing. He's not scoring as regularly these days, of no. course, as in his prompt with Manchester United and Newcastle. And I think both Cole and York would testify to the fact that they're not making quite as many chances, certainly as they got at Manchester United together. Now to Kishi Chef. Very short, saw it coming all the way. Cole penalised, and it's a rather mystifying decision to him. Here's Lisby. Somehow squeezed it to Powell. Andy Todd trying to buy Blackburn a bit of time here, and Thompson as well. Between them, they come away with the ball. Well, Andy Cole just in the word with Uriah Rennie about that. I do think he's a fussy at times, Uriah Rennie. I think he is one of those referees that doesn't really let the game flow enough for me. 
He's very, very quick to put his whistle in his mouth and stop the game. Well, he must be pleasing somebody because he's got the Sunday slot for the <laughs> second time in three weeks. So I'm at the Stadium of Light. Fish. Switch on the player cam to Egil Hurstenstadt, the rejuvenated Norwegian striker. Sky Digital viewers. One more, one more, one more. Red button. Yes, clear, clear. Fortune. Here's Dunn. Dunn again. Duff tucking in field. Very congested and another stoppage. And you already remember stepped in between Roy Keane and Jason McAteer in a game at Sunderland earlier in the season. Was quick to interpose himself there in case there was any flare-up. You wouldn't argue with him. Uh, or maybe you would. One or two players. <laughs> <in this side. laughs> He's a burly figure for an official. Very fit man. Powell with the subsequent free kick. Fortunes in there. He scored in the Premiership this season at West Ham. On Monday, 7.30 on Sky Sports 1, Derby County against Wimbledon. Premiership clubs of the too distant past and on Wednesday Burton Albion against Oldham that's a first round replay in the FA Cup so going to be a giant killing act there you'll see Sky Sports 2 Wednesday at 7 off goes Bartlett it's a rather untidy header by Johansson maybe not quite a tune to uh, having Alan Kelly in goal rather than Brad Friedel, but it's a corner probably they will feel has been unnecessarily conceded. Can Charlton take advantage of it? And they work it short for Radistein Kishishev. Rufus in there. And this be uh, passing Duff into a pretty tight corner. Well, he did well, he was it? rushed into tackling and given the free kick away there Kevin Lisby so many players do that relieve the pressure by committing an offence this has come up to make a target for Young from the throat again across by fortune no shortage of numbers Alan Kirbishley saying before the game that wants to get more players forward and increase the percentages of the ball dropping in the right place at the right time but the danger of doing that against a team like Blackburn is you can be picked up on the break Duff this is uh, Erston Stapp to come back out again but he does that most capably Neil, Cole, you got a foot in, it breaks for Dunn, Thompson, oh. <laughs> they're on their feet in parts of the ground, yeah. it hit the net on the outside though from David Thompson, great ball from David Dunn, you know Martin, he's, he's almost reversing it here, and he gets possession, you just watch this, he looks like he's going to go wide, but he reverses a quite beautiful little ball, and David Thompson, who's very, very close to getting the opening goal. Good feet, shifts it, gets his little bit of space before the shot. Thompson started at Blackburn with a flurry of goals, three in his first six appearances. And blue and white. Not quite Ruud van der Stoel, are you? <laughs> Three from three. Yeah. Duff. Got away from Kishishev. Neil stepping in. Yeah. 
Griffiths should have the extra pace here. Eston Stats got plenty of determination and strength, and he's done very well for Blackburn. Couldn't quite put it into the stride of Lucas Neal. But Richard Rufus would be particularly relieved about that. He thought he was heading Eston Stat off. And that's the uh, revitalised Egil Eston Stat. Oh, he didn't give it up, did he? And here's Curtis. Fortunate that bounce back onto him. Well, I almost think this is a free kick. You know, when you look at Richard Rufus, he's no interest in playing the ball here, Martin, but he just leans into your stance. That almost giving away a free kick, I would say. He's just a little unlucky. He didn't play a great ball back to David Dunn at the edge of the box. He's looking to get in behind Charlton. And that's quality which has earned him his selection today. Plenty of strikers uh, with them. York we've seen, Rabi, Janssen. Shorter sure defenders though on the bench, aren't they, when mm, Keith Gillespie is the other <laughs> outfield substitute. York! Lisby jumping for it. Look to turn and hit that on his own, Jason Ewer, and I think that Sean Bartlett might well have been asking why he didn't just knock it back to where he was. Duff. Rufus in the way. Yeah, Parker. Lisby. And just behind Scott Parker and took the edge off the move. Play on, a message from the assistant. Blackburn determined to do that with Cole. Okay. Half intercepted. Top, maybe back to Curtis. Parker again. You're all trying to get forward from that central midfield role. This is Lisby on the chase. And Short knew exactly where he was expected to be. Well, certainly when the, both teams get the ball in the last third, you do feel that Blackburn just have that little bit more in the locker. They haven't quite put it together yet. Well, they have scored almost to double the amount of Premiership goals for Charlton. That's another one of those decisions that I just think that Marcia starts only getting his body along the line of the ball, Martin. What you tell your striker to do time and time again. <laughs> Look at me, can't believe it. Yes, you do feel there are one or two uh, areas of football, people in football who want to make this a non contact sport. Uh, much the worse for that. Just a bit. Young. Chef. Plenty of contact there and of a fair variety. Uh, Neil Serrett Johansson. Just over five minutes to go to half time. It's a game with a certain amount of anxiety to it. And Nicole doing his best to tilt it Blackburn's way. Jason Newell has unhappy memories of this fixture last season. He missed quite a few chances, and as I mentioned earlier, Blackburn won it 2 0. They did the double over Charlton. He would only three weeks later and won 4 1. And Scott Parker was sent off up in the northwest. Thompson, he was a Coventry player then. Duff. I do feel that Duff and Dunn and Thompson enjoy working together. Made a nice triangle there. Neil. Dunn again. Thompson again. Now Neil. Oh, strong Charlton appeals for throw in vain.
McNeil. Important, wasn't it? He just thought Cole was just going to cushion out on his tummy, his chest area. Fish just wrapped his leg around the striker, just got him a big important touch in the ball. Cole was in front of the South African. Another cross from Thompson. Duff knocked away from him by Luke Young. win they would go level on points with Leeds United I guess at the start of the season if you said at the end of November you're level with Leeds a lot with the team you'd have been very happy wouldn't you a lot with the taking it Mervyn Day out of the think tank yeah. Lynn Snowden also in the background there with Keith Peacock Okay, in the end, there was just a fraction of a second where Lisby was into the full sprint. Well, can be excused a bit of rustiness. He has played one uh, senior game this season. That was in the Worthington Cup against Walsall. And as he has done in the past in penalty shootouts, he came up on the winning side. Made an important save and spared uh, that point. Sort of embarrassment that Cheltenham had here in bundles against Oxford United. Yeah, they might just load this now with, mm. what, less than two minutes to go. It's a too quick for Rufus to get forward. And it's rather wasted. Kishishev. The drop for Powell. Well, he decides rather than a quick cross, and there were three or four in the middle who were a bit mystified by that decision. Uh, Point Brenner back in more orderly fashion now. Oh, not that orderly. Bartlett caused the problem. Starting towards the near post. You'd have fancied him. Through the near. That's a very, very positive run. The only thing in his defence is he probably gets about a foot ahead of the ball. And he can't get enough touch on it to direct it towards goal just got a fraction ahead of it a very very good and very positive run from Bartlett score of the winning goal at Manchester City last weekend which is a very, a very difficult fixture for Charlton Kevin Keegan's team on the back of that marvellous win over Manchester United Lisby that's not quite right the numbers that Alan Kirbishley been calling for him, we're in the middle. Erston Staff. Duff. Done. Oh. We had Kylie stretching, not reaching from that side of the ground. And Sunes would have had a, yeah. a brilliant view as to how close this was. This is what I mean about the breaking mark. How quickly did the break here from back to front? And that's what they've got in the locker, Blackburn. That's a fabulous attempt. And it's so, so close to putting Blackburn in the lead. Oh, dear me, it's no more than six inches wide, that. I think it'd beaten Dean Kiley as well. And from the Charlton point of view, it came from a poor cross when they were attacking at the other end and having lost the ball then, players committed to try and reaching that cross and it's a bit short-handed for a moment as Blackburn switched quickly from right to left. As you look. Stoppage time before half time at the valley. Duff. And in stoppage time. The time is there for a corner to be taken. Very nearly up. Got this taken very quickly if I was David Thompson. Yeah, 
there goes the half-time whistle. Well, it's been a rather tentative first half. Andy Cole, though, has uh, played with the pace and purpose, and he will go in feeling that Blackburn should have had a penalty when he turned Richard Rufus. But Uriah Rennie pointed for a goal kick and not a penalty kick. It's nil-nil at half-time. Tomorrow night, we have more live football on Sky Sports from the First Division. It's Derby against Wimbledon, 7.30 start here on one. And Wednesday night on Sky Sports 2, it's the FA Cup first round replay between Burton Albion and Oldham. Robbie Musto is with us. Tim Sherwood is here as well. Half time, no goals at the Valley, but that's a big chalking point. And we will have goals from the second division when we come back. Robbie Musto and Tim Sherwood are with us this afternoon. Tim, of course, who won a championship medal with Blackburn Rovers. Both, in, both well, I was going to say both injured, Tim, but are you close to a return now? Yeah, I've been injured for quite a long time. I had a knee ligament injury, but um, I'm over that now and I'm back training. I've played one reserve game and just hoping to get more games under me about now. Well, we're very grateful to Tottenham for letting uh, us have you here today. And Robbie Musto, out of the side, injured at the moment as well. Now, our ch I've worked very hard, of course, to get to this stage, but our Charlton a little fortunate to be going in without having conceded. Maybe, yeah. I think uh, we've looked at the... Uh the situation now it does look like a penalty so maybe we've been a, bit, a little bit lucky there um, but I think in the whole rather stuck in the throat there for <laughs> you didn't it but whichever way I you look at this surely it's a penalty isn't it it definitely didn't get any of the ball maybe he's just trying to make a challenge to shield it out of play but so what's extraordinary is Andy pointed out he's given the goal kick so what Tim did he see here if he didn't see a penalty that's a penalty but if you see fortune now he looks straight up at the referee he knows he's got away with it Give me a little class and a wink, probably. But I mean, it's definitely it's a definite penalty. There's no other way you can really see it. They say when you're down at the bottom, your luck's often out. Have you had a big slice of good fortune there? Yeah, I think so. I think it's up to the lads now to uh, to do a bit better in the second half. I've been a little bit disappointed, really, the way we've uh, we started the game today. We haven't really managed to get ahead of steam up, really, and get the fans kind of up like we have been the last few home, home games here. So. I'm sure the manager will be saying, come on, let's start quickly and, and get the tempo up a little bit for the second half. It has been strangely quiet, hasn't it? It has been. I think Blackburn started quite brightly and put us on our back foot a little bit. And uh, it's always difficult then to, to try and force the game a little bit. We've had a few sporadic attacks and, and the fans kind of get a bit excited. But then it's gone quiet again. So I'd like to see us sort of have a, a little bit more sustained pressure and, and, and try and you know, create a few more chances. If you were a betting man, Tim, could you see a winner here? And if so, which side? I think Blackburn have created the better chances. I think Charlton need to uh, push the uh, full-backs on. They're playing with three centre-backs there. They've got Kitty Chef who's sitting there. He can give them all the protection they need. They need to push Powell and Youngie on forward, get crosses into the box. Because when they get the cross into the box, that's when they're creating the half chances. So I think that's what they need to do. I think they're a bit cautious of doing it because of Duff's threat on the other side. But... I think they need to, they're at home after all, and they need a win, you know, a draw is, you know, neither here nor there for them. It's at the Valley yet here in the Barker Card Premiership, it's Charlton nil, Blackburn Rovers nil, second half, up next. Rovers are on the way back, and we hear news of shortly a substitution, but nothing yet. There's some concerns about Egil Oshtenstad and a groin strain, so Dwight York has been warming up half-time. We'll see how that develops. Robbie Musto and Tim Sherwood are with us. Robbie, what's Charlton's best way through? Well, I think we really need to get a bit more pressure and get a bit more um, ball in there and kind of the attacking third. We've been forced back a little bit by Blackburn. If we can get the ball forward and get some good crosses into the box, I think we have had little opportunities where, you know, we have looked like scoring a little bit, but we haven't been enough of them really in the first half. So we need to get a bit more pressure and get some crosses in. As well as Oshinstad has done, Tim, if they make the change, is it the sort of game where the cleverness of York might make the difference? Yeah, maybe. I think he can give you a little bit of uh, inspiration, but I mean, they need to get the ball out to Duff. He's the key, really. Duff and, or David Dunn, they can unlock the defence, and uh, I think Cole's looked as sharp as I've seen him for a while. No goals yet. For Sky Digital viewers, first 15 minutes of this second half, Chris Powell will be the focus of player camp. If you want to have a look at that, push the red button on your remote and follow the instructions. Commentators, Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Thanks, Richard. Yes, the message from the Blackburn dressing room is that Austin Stat will be given 
five minutes just to see how he is. And Charlton, though, are going to make their first change. John Fortune, who was the player caught in that uh, lunge for Andy Cole, but got away with it. Just got the nod to start the game ahead of this fella, young Paul Koncheski, who's been away with the England under-21s last week. It's only a, a tactical change, no injury involved. Well, you know Alan Kirby, Martin, and I know enough about him to understand that what Alan does when he sets his team out, he has a look, and if his team aren't doing well against a different system, he often changes it in the game, and I think that's what we're going to see now. We're going to see Charlton play 4-4-2, Rufus and Fish at the back, the centre-backs, and Konchevsky's just dropped over to the left-hand side here. Four in midfield, Parker and Ewell, the other two, in the centre of midfield. So, they're going to go like for like, because they have been second best. Yes, Blackburn have won the uh, tactical point against Charlton by making them change on their own ground. And this is Erstenstadt. No sign of injury there. Or there, he's hit the post with the header. Oh, he's unlucky. Well, I tell you what, his drive and determination in behind Martin has really caused a problem. He just muscles out, look young out the way there, and he's so unlucky. Very deft little header. Didn't get maybe enough power in it, but it was a deft little header. Wrong footed the goalkeeper. And he's unlucky. Very unlucky. 11 of Blackburn's 20 points have come from their away games, and they played six away before today and eight at home, so uh, see they've travelled well. The back by Dunn was a bit risky. Well, it wasn't getting there, you know. No. It was not getting there unless Lucas Neal just as well. He took up that position, Martin. Sure. I think part of the reason they've changed as well is because I think Duff has been exposing Luke Young in one against one situations. What that does now when you play four in front and, and midfield, it means that Kishishev will be asked that when the ball comes down the left hand side, he's got to then be given support to Luke Young. Johansson. There is Duff. Young trying to get a challenge in, and he does. Done. Todd and Parker. Andy Todd got the ball. Here's Lisby. How can Charlton support him? Or does he need any support? Kevin Lisby strikes the back of Craig Short's heel and goes away for a Charlton court. Well, Kincheski's run just attracted a couple of defenders. You know, if Kincheski doesn't make this run wide then, Martin, then he gets closed down a lot quicker. You see how Curtis was attracted to the run of Kincheski and had to leave Lisby. Chesky's unmarked on the edge of the area if they want to give the ball to him, he's screaming for it. Ah! And he does get it. Big ball required. Kishishev. there to try and flick on the throw again. Saw a bit of that in the first half. So saw plenty of good movement from Andy Cole. Movement restricted there by Powell. Curtis. Lucky okay, room here for Thompson. Parker tried to react to that, but in scampering back, he just clipped Thompson and it's certainly a free kick within range of Dean Kiley's goal for Blackburn Rovers. And packs a punch with his right foot. Curtis has uh, come forward and is uh, on on the right hand side, but Thompson thinks better of it, having spotted him. There's no one really looking as if they might want to win a header here, so Thompson clearly going for goal and straight down the central slot for Dean Kylick. Yeah, pretty team in the end, wasn't it? Konczewski is a fairly versatile character. And, uh, he's played most of his Charlton games as an out-and-out -out defender. Okay. 
Cole's not chasing that. We've had no chance of getting it. Blackburn with three away wins this season. They only won four in the entire previous campaign, including a 2-0 win here. But here's Kishishek. Parker. Hit it particularly convincingly. Young trying to give uh, Duff a taste of his own medicine. Cole. And it's fiercely contested. Blackburn probably shading it if he was scoring it on points. Charlton that in front of their own fans. Maybe if they can get one decent cross in, they got to wide positions in the first half and not really delivered. Uh, do it there because Lisby's run out of room. I do think the change will help them. I do believe that. But I'm not surprised that Alan has done that. York is increasing the preparations. Maybe uh, link up again with Andy Cole. Curtis. He did well there, Todd. It's not his game, really. The ball into feet. Uh, free kick was taken uh, while the ball was rolling. But Todd made sure he got the free kick. By getting his body across. Son of Colin Todd, of course. This time done to Neil. I'm saying, just give it to me and uh, see what will happen. It's uh, an earliest cross from Duff. That was well hit, but it was going a long way wide. David Dunn. Rest and start. So you are back there to uh, prevent the corner. Fisher Chef, one of the bigger cheers of the day. Lost here to Chelsea, to Tottenham, to Arsenal, and to Manchester United. Not an easy set of home fixtures. At least they're out of the way for Alan Kerbishley. Kishishev. Thompson. Hurston Stats. And Kylie. Read it right in the end. Said it again, wasn't it? Don't watch this that. Over the top. And I guess that's the sort of run that Graham mm. Sunas is feeling he's not getting really from Andy Cole and Dwight York. They like to come towards the ball. That's a uh, training to be a lawyer, Eggy Lustin Stat. I get uh, plenty of money, of course, but maybe not as much as Premiership footballers. Career can be a bit longer though. Oh, just a bit. Cole. Yes, does that. Tight on him was Rufus, and here's uh, Yule. Kishi Chef. Luke Young. A moment to survey the scene, and a bit longer. Still Young. Parker. back in blue and white still guarding Kelly's goal or helping him guard the goal so that the task in the end for Brad Friedel's deputy was a straightforward one just got to be careful the way they're set up at the moment that's given away by Thompson Parker couldn't get Lisby through howls of disappointment around the valley Cole Done. Now, 
Duff but that might skip away from him. And he's just kept it in. Hudson making a run into the centre. Coles there as you'd expect. Erston's that as well. Patient approach from Blackburn Rovers. David Dunn. I'm just talking about Charlton, we've just got to be a little careful, Mark, when they go forward at the moment in this setup with Jason Newell, centre in midfield, he likes to get forward. Scott Parker, another one we saw driving at the edge of the box. We've just got to be careful that if both of those go at the same time, that they don't get caught with a quick break. I just wonder if maybe, I mean, I don't think it's quite been Kevin Lisby's day. And I just wonder if people like Chris Bart Williams who could come in and sit in midfield and then push Ewell forward in an advanced position alongside Bartlett, maybe think about that. Done. Done. He likes the uh, thick of the action Jason Hill this job gives him. But he is a potential match winner as a forward player. Well, I just think that's that would be the key. When you're looking for a goal, when you look at the outfield players, he is one who is likely to get a chance and likely to take it. Bartlett, Konczewski, Bartlett, Konczewski. <laughs> be careful with his uh, challenges after what happened to him on the opening day of the season. And he got sent off against Chelsea. Of course, had that not happened, Charlton's home record might be a lot better than it is. Again, they were winning. And lost 3-2. Lisbon. but turn the ball towards his own goal. And Hansen, the grand sooner signing. Right across and swept it away. You. Massively important match, particularly for Charlton. Dig their way out of the uh, early season relegation worries. Psychology of premiership play is... Uh, so influential. Graham Sunnis trying to look up for Blackburn up the table where they might go, but there's some iffy results recently. Lack of wins, too many defeats. He's worrying about dropping down into the, uh, the pack, which is usually quite big at this stage of the season, who are thinking that they might go down. Well, that's a good take. They do like that free kick challenge from central areas where they just hit it straight down towards the penalty spot and look for the crowd scene, look for players to get up. Get a little touch for the ball dropping. That's a good take from a goalkeeper. And quick feet from Kishishev. Parker of similar ability. And he was pursued by Todd. And in the end, in the mind of Uriah Rennie, tripped by Todd. Well, I think it's just a little push, isn't it? As much as anything, Martin gets hold of his shot. He almost tripped over his own feet. Mm. I think he probably saw the little nudge in the shot. Yellow card for the former Charlton man. Free kick for the current Charlton crop. And two of the youngest members of the squad in charge of it. Parker and Konczewski. Still in the first quarter of an hour of the second half. And Ryan Rennie makes sure that a bit of pushing and shoving at the end of that wall is under his control. Not satisfied as yet. They're trying to create a gap, I think, for maybe Konczewski to whip the ball through. There it goes. There it goes! Paul Konczewski, substitute for Charlton. A sensational arrival into the match. He's made the breakthrough. Well, maybe the manager's made the breakthrough. Great change at half time. But what a weekend it's been for free kicks, Martin. And glorious free kicks that have just been unstoppable. This is another one that's in that bracket. Just open the top drawer. 
and put this one in amongst the rest. Hamar Shearer to quote another two this weekend. A quite stunning free kick from Paul Kuczewski. You were a little down on yourself for your predictions yesterday, Andy, about that tight game at Old Trafford, but uh, I must say you said about set pieces very early in the piece today. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think if you keep it tight at the back, the way that they've done, Charlton, don't concede. Then, all right, if you're not creating chances, then you pay special attention to free kicks, corners, and you might just nick one. I wouldn't say that was nicking one. It was a glorious free kick. But it's given them a valuable, valuable lead, Charlton. Thompson! The lead hasn't lasted for long. It's zipped in past Dean Kiley from David Thompson. I'll tell you what, you lose track of the great balls we've seen this weekend, and this is another one. Well, it can only be less than a minute. 71 seconds in. I tell you what, not only does David Thompson finish it, he's the one who flicked on Andy Cole. He then turned to join up with Andy Cole's little layoff. And what an unerring strike this is. Across Dean Kelly, it's past the goalkeeper before he's even diving. It's a glorious response from Blackburn. 1-1 one, one from the pocket, Rocket. that now fish that's really set Charlton back having uh, not played particularly well and then found uh, a fabulous free kick to open the scoring but the game now with that uh, Lisbeth is looking altogether different sometimes when one side scores the other equalizes quickly in a game that's previously been tied yeah. it sort of locks it back into that scenario it's just been incredible isn't it and this is Lisby here coming through and just looking at him. Well, it goes near side there, he's never going to score. Kevin Lisby at that angle. But it does often happen, Martin. I've seen it time and time again. A game that's nil nil, looks like it's going nowhere. One team scores and wow. Alan will be really disappointed that his team haven't been able to defend for five, ten minutes, protect that lead. Look at the frustration, you can see how disappointed he is. Not him. No, he'll be delighted. Parker. Young. It's the uh, change for Blackburn. It is the expected one. He's done a good job, Aggie Lustenstadt. Yeah. And he gives way to Dwight York, who has uh, a winning goal on this ground to his name for Manchester United. Reunited with Andrew Cole, who is now the subject of the player cam for Sky Digital viewers. Rufus. We well, talk about protecting a lead. What do you think from kickoff to the ball hitting the net? How many? Do you know what it was? No. 38 seconds. From kickoff to the ball hitting the back of the net. Well, it's oh. uh, brilliant for Blackburn. It shows that uh, the heads were up and the spirits were high, but from Charlton's point of view, I feel they've been guilty of a, a lack of professionalism. But what a sweet strike. Oh. Both, both goals. Yeah. You. Well, it was an inviting ball. Kevin Lisby has got the velocity to get into those situations. That's not easy. He just hasn't got that killer instinct. This is a brilliant cross from Jason Ewell. I think he should head this. Uh, I think he should, if he throws himself at that, it's a much easier skill. He should still hit the target. That's a glorious opportunity. You won't get a better ball. You won't get a better chance. Charlton the side that seems at the moment, if they do score, only to score one in a game. Their goal today by Paul Konczewski, incidentally their first ever at home to Blackburn in the top division of English football. Well, 
They've only got an untried youngster on the bench today. Ryan Robinson. So, uh, Kelly is okay. Robinson's come through a very successful youth setup, illustrated by Bobby Downs and Robert Kelly, the coaches at Ewood Park, played in a Youth Cup final. Drops for York. Done. He does like the tackle, Scott Parker, mm. doesn't he? Yeah, it wasn't always that way at Charlton. I think I mentioned the last time we were here. He was uh, praised for his uh, ball-playing skills as a youth uh, midfield player, but he realised to get into an Alan Kirbishley team, he have got to punch his weight in the tackle, and he's, he certainly does that plus. Yes. Neil. Oh, Rufus. Racing his own goal, Thompson. The second attempt. Cole. It's not a bad effort from Cole, he could do nothing else, Martin. Struggling. I would have expected a teammate to mm. take the chance and run in there. I'm sure Paul Scholes would have done in a vintage time together at Old Trafford. <laughs> done. <laughs> Off goes Barclay. That's on the ball from Backman's point of view. Got to carry through to Kelly. A little too tight, I think. There, free kick into the foul on York. And he got uh, his flurry of goals when he started. There's a Blackburn player, David Thompson, which helped get him into the England squad for the uh, internationals uh, against the. Slovakia and Macedonia, although he didn't get into either game. Paul Brick is here representing the England setup. It's interesting that Thompson got picked after David Dunn had won a cap in uh, September. Dunn hasn't featured since match against Portugal and he came on the, in the second half along with plenty of others. Got one for Konczewski here and he's gone back into the traffic. Rufus. Well done by Johansson to whip it away. And the on-rushing Lisby. Altogether, more engrossing second half at the Valley. Fisher Chef. Rufus. Thompson. He does his work all over the pitch. That's a good example there. Back defending as a midfield player in your own box. Didn't take a chance of trying to knock a fancy little ball back to his goalkeeper. It was just out of play and then gets set again. Thompson. Oh, we got in front of Fish. Curtis. Two options on for Blackburn here. Dunn. York. Off coming from the left and doing so, leaving a bit of space for Neil. York. Short. 
Thompson. Charlton fans a bit agitated, seeing Blackburn play the ball around, trying to turn the game around, having conceded the first at the Valley. Well, I was going to say at the moment, no real problem, because all everything had been played in front of Charlton's back eight, if you like now, they are in that passage of play. No real penetration from Blackburn, good possession, but no thrust. Well, Jason Ewell didn't really try to jump. He was looking at Johansson, wasn't he? Yeah, I think I don't think you can have any argument about that being a free kick. You have a look at the player, you put your body in the way, ease him out. Quick reminder, Monday, 7.30, Sky Sports 1, Derby against Wimbledon. From the First Division of the Football League, it's FA Cup action, first round replay on Wednesday on Sky Sports 2. Burton Albion of the conference against second division Oldham Athletic. Going well under Ian Dowie's management. Nigel Clough, the manager of Burton Albion. And Sinis, the manager of Blackburn, a bit concerned about uh, Johansson. Ewell, of course, was booked in the first half. And Uriah Rennie has sent him off before in this Ewell's Wimbledon days. Back on the pitch now, Johansson, so no problems there. Thompson, done. Still Thompson. But, uh, it's you. Can't he spread about the play now. Powell. Bartlett, Kanchewski, good claim by Kelly. Well, it deserves someone going to cross in front of the goalkeeper near post. Just a little bit on their heels. I guess if they had that type of player, Andy, yeah. they'd have probably scored seven yeah. or eight more goals this season. And we wouldn't be talking about trying to pull away from the bottom. We found a goal scorer today. And the glorious Paul Kanchewski free kick, but from open play. Still rather barren for Alan Kerbishley's team. There's no flag here. Lisby, can he squeeze it in? He can't. Well, that's his big let down every time I see Kevin Lisby Martin. That's another great chance. He looked to play offside, he probably is just offside. Flag might well have gone up there, maybe should have gone up, but he got the advantage. Then having gone round the goalkeeper there, he rather loses his head, loses his way. Just didn't finish it. Got a little gap there. That's pretty poor. I think that's his problem. That's what Kevin's got to work on ever so hard as he's finishing. Yes, because uh, a lot of better finishers who'd love to have his pace. Yeah. Parker. That was uh, almost through. Dead ball situation for Paul Kuczewski. Chant corner this time. A Rufus free header! Makes the most of it. Chant lead for a second time. Richard Rufus. Another set piece for Alan Kerbishley's team. No one on the post. And they pay the price, Blackburn. And this is just good movement from Rufus. He goes in, he watches movement, and then he checks back in behind his marker. And by doing that, he doesn't have to jump, Martin. He's made the little movement, he's got himself the yard of space he needs, and then he just directs the header. It's a fabulous header over Alan Kelly. There's a run, there's the check. He's lost Lucas Neal, I think it is. And that's a fabulous header. When you stick someone in the goalpost, you're heading it clear. So this goal pack weekend in the Barclay Card Premiership includes two for Charlton Athletic, which is a bit like Manchester United getting five <laughs> yesterday. Now, if the front men aren't doing it, it helps when a defender 
chips in with one and we've seen the Konczewski show what he's capable of takes the pressure off the likes of Bartlett and Lisbeth Charlton 2, Blackburn 1 I think we're already past the point where yeah. the reply can be <laughs> yeah. as quick a second time Duff Duff Young can't get it away. Powell got the positional play right. Thompson couldn't be found. Ewell wants a free kick. Sharp can get a throw. What I mean, you know, when they get into that yeah. mindset, Mark, where every little bit of physical contact. Well, it's slightly less infuriating at 2 1 up than at the 1 1. Just a moment's thought. The referees do have the license now to pull it back if the yeah. advantage accrues. Saw Graham Paul do that for Didi Hammond's free kick yesterday. This is Ewell. Oh, that wasn't quite Ewell. Curtis. Blackburn, uh, all animation and agitation now. Been uh, rather a story for them in recent games. They've played okay, haven't had too much to show for it. Could be uh, another game to add to that list. Lisby uh, feeling that Thompson exaggerated that. <laughs> Thompson <laughs> won't let go. Well, he got closed down, Kevin Lisby, but I'm not too sure how much contact there was or whether it was just David jumping out the way. As as players tend to do when they see a, a player coming in to challenge them. There's the ball's a little bit short. I mean, what is, I mean, it's, it's nothing, Martin, is it? Nope. Yes, yeah, another yellow card. I mean, how many were them at, top, at Tottenham today? I lost double count figures. To ten. Double yeah. figures. <laughs> I lost count of ten. Well, we saw this fella score an equaliser. The only. Weeks of the season. Chicho, they call him Corrado Grabby. Who equalised against Liverpool at Ewood Park in a game that finished 2 2. And Sunes wanting the same again. You. You know Charlton are going to be anxious in this situation. Yeah. And Blackburn capitalise on that. Done. Duff. Strong with the ball. You can give the Duff the ball to his feet wherever he is with a man behind him because he's got that tenacity to withstand the defender. Quickly into the feet of Cole by Duff. Grabby. Plenty of players forward for Blackbird. Fish partially away. Konczewski didn't get there. Thompson did but ran out of room. Sean Bartlett looking for a chance maybe in the closing minutes to put this game beyond Blackburn's redress and follow him on the player cam and Sky Digital viewers and I think if there are a few South Africans watching today they'll want to do that well he's got the three at the back Graham Sinesmark we're bringing on Grabby Lucas Neal Short Johansson Chesky. And Young 
get there first. He's attuned to the pace of the game, probably not quite as yet. How? Fish. It's over Bartlett. Parker. that time against Rufus really Parker he was looking for a free kick that he probably wasn't entitled to that ten minutes to go Martin Rovers admiral away form showing plenty of resilience on their travels put to the test here 2-1 down in a game that's really come to life in the second period Rabbit. Duck. Duck. This has got to be careful. Short. Grabby. No flag. And no cross. Chance. Yeah, just got away from him. <laughs> you and I both. We can't see this <laughs> assistant on the near side very easily. Andy and I both stood up immediately to have a look to see whether that was offside. Yeah, you can see Mark Fish. The guilty party there. Yeah, Hansen had a bit of a wild swing at it. Yeah, get, up, get forward, that's... Uh, a message from the manager. Well, he's not going to get an equaliser by just dropping off to a left back position. Man. I don't know that's what he's trying to see here. Short. He's got a piece of it. Grabby is there. Parker. Come to Yule, who's never stopped working. Well, everything's come off for Jason Yule today. But he's never hit. Kishishev. The diagonal ball for Bartlett's head. The runner is Yule. Well, it was well put together by Charlton. Well, that's the best piece of open play, I think, in the game. Given away by Neil, but he goes and gets it back. Helped by York. He knows how to read the game of Sean Bartley. He's been playing up front with him, mm -hmm. Jason Yule. He covered uh, a lot of ground, having been the architect of the attack. He's trying, uh, well, it would wrap the game up for Charlton if he'd been able to get in a scoring shot. And Sunas is the ball boy. Didn't work for Terry Venables today, Andy, you were telling me. He got the ball, threw yeah, it back. We've talked about back and Tottenham scores. Yeah. <laughs> we kick given away by Parker, quickly taken by Blackburn, Johansson. Played by Kishishev. Bartley can't hold it up when they'd have loved him to do that. Possible really to overestimate the importance of Charlton getting a, a second win here to follow up their success at Manchester City. And Rufus with the right sort of clearance in the circumstances. He's got it up into the top tier of the stand, which takes a bit of doing. Well, normally I see a rose head, but that's in the double A, <laughs> double C bracket, isn't it? And double D, Damien Duff and David Duff. And forward by Todd, and uh, well, it wasn't an easy one. Andy Cole, his only goal on this ground, was scored for not Manchester United, not Newcastle, but Bristol City. Long time ago. Mm. 
came on for 10 years ago. Well, I think they've had plenty of possession, uh, Blackburn Rovers, Martin, in the last 10 minutes since they went 2-1 down. But I think what Charlton have done, they've defended well. It's what we talked about right at the top. I think in recent games, they haven't given a lot of goals away. I mean, they're really going for it now. Craig's shot has gone up to centre forward in between Grabby and, and Andy Cole, so they're really taking a chance now. But they've defended fairly well, although they've had lots of possession. There's been very little penetration in the attacks of Blackburn at the moment. Everything's been playing in front of the back four. Dan York is operating uh, deeper than Cole and Short. There's going to be a chance for Lisby to counter-attack. Grabby trying to match him, but uh, Lisby's away. That'll do in the circumstances, it helps run down the clock. We're coming towards five minutes left. Well, they won't be in a rush to take this, and why should they be? That's happened. Todd's gone into the back line yeah. now for Blackburn. Charlton. Oh, There's a change to... I talked about, hasn't it? Yeah. Earlier on in the match, Kevin Lesby, Chris Bart Williams. I would expect now that that would mean Jason Newell maybe will be released to play up top. It might just be to keep five in midfield and say, listen, five minutes to go, let's protect what we have. He's an experienced campaigner, Chris Bart Williams. We all know exactly what's required. It's Charlton edge towards their target of three premiership points. We only their second home win in the Premiership this season. State attendance at the value is 26,152. We'd like to thank you for your support here Another today. Another 26,000 plus crowd at the Valley, and the majority in good heart at the moment, although it'll be a bit of nail-biting, I feel. Yeah, These closing minutes. Another change, Graham Finesse this time. Okay. Gillespie. Sinis has detected a little bit of tiredness in David Thompson. He's the man taking off, Blackburn the scorer here. Number 20, David Thompson is number 18, Keith Gillespie. chooses to add off. That's the direct route now. That was done. Here's Neil. Trying to defend too deep, Charlton here, and draw Blackburn onto them. Todd. Neil. Short and company wanting it to test him from there, but must be trying to get a better angle initially and then really disappointing those in the middle by running with the ball. Maybe he felt he could uh, go all the way himself from there, but left a lot of his teammates rather stranded in the penalty area. Todd. Dunn. We might go all the way here, David Dunn. And it was Jason Yule still very much back in his own half of the pitch. Yeah, I don't think there's any thoughts in Jason's mind of supporting Sean Bartlett. He knows what the job in hand is, and that's protection. Johansson. Short making a nuisance of himself, claiming there's a bit of a shove on it. Grabby. Gillespie. And he uses pace against Powell. Gets the cross in towards Grabby. Dunn hit it. Well, Reflected for that. Corner that Andy's announced, <laughs> and that Blackburn are in a hurry to take, and Rabbi wants a short one. It's the outswinger, and it's the out ball for Charlton from Parker. 
90th minute. York. Dunn tries again. Fish saw that coming. Look where the Charlton players are. Absolutely nobody thinking about being upfield when it this might suit them to have somebody there to relieve the pressure. I don't think you come too far out in situations like this, Martin. Cole protects your penalty area. Corner. The way it's gone for Charlton this season, you just wonder whether there's a break for Blackburn Rovers and the dying embers of this match. Another corner, is it? Oh, Blackburn thinks so. Short particularly thinks so. Yeah, Hansen's having a say. Well, the referee's pointing to Andy Todd, saying that's who the last touch was off. Well, we're about to find out now how many minutes to stop this time. It's two, Mark. Two minutes away from a big, big victory. Knocked down by Bartlett. Ewell trying to wrap it up. Oh! What a wonderful way to do just that. The points are in the bag now for Alan Kirbishley and Charlton Athletic. Well, the goals just keep getting better and better. He's deserved it. He's been Charlton's best player. He's been all over this pitch. Defence, midfield, attack. And what a strike this is. Absolutely flies past Alan Kelly. It's close to the goalkeeper, but he can't do it the better, man, because the power is absolutely stunning. What a strike. He's deserved it. At half time, you wouldn't have thought Charlton would have deserved a win here, but they have found the goal touch that's been so elusive on many occasions this season. And Jason Ewell's name to the list. Well, that's what I, said about the change. Rufus Ewell. So I was talking about the change, wasn't it? And I said it wasn't happening for Kevin Lisby. You know, I would have done that maybe earlier in the second half because that's what he's capable of in tandem with Bartlett. The little knockdown was from Bartlett, and the rest was all about Ewell. But I do think Blackburn will wonder how the three won down in this match. Grab it. Corner, but less tension around the ground. He knows the day is done, really. And who clears Jason Ewell again? Kelly. Parker. Victories in the Barclay Card Premiership for Charlton Athletic. That hasn't happened since the turn of the year. The only side in the bottom five at the start of the weekend to have won, to have gained a bit of breathing space. Richard Rufus headed in a corner. That put them back in front. They had a lead through Koncheski's wonderful free kick. David Thompson equalised sweetly for Blackburn straight away. And then uh, Jason Yule made absolutely sure, ended the anxieties which were mounting as Blackburn's pressure was mounting. Sonny Blackburn's second away defeat in the league and the first time they have lost anywhere to Charlton Athletic in the Premiership. Charlton 3, Blackburn 1. To the strains of Happy Valley Sunday, somebody's been watching our programme. More live football tonight, Atletico Madrid against Real Betis, 6.35 when we're finished here on Sky Sports 1. And then it looks like this through the week. Tomorrow from the First Division, again on one at half past seven, it's Derby and Wimbledon. Wednesday, Nigel Clough's Burton going against Oldham, who have been taking cup scalps of their own this season. Now the boot's on the other foot. Seven o'clock, the replay, the FA Cup first round replay between Burton and Oldham is on Sky Sports 2. Next Sunday, make a note, early start, half past 11 from Anfield. It's Liverpool and Manchester United followed by the pay-per-view game, which features Newcastle and Everton. That starts at 2.
And there's a confirmation of how important to Charlton they leapfrog Manchester City and they are right on the heels of Leeds United who lost again today 2-0 at Spurs. Sheringham and Robbie Keane, the goal scorers for Tottenham. Robbie Musto's here, Tim Sherwood is with us. We'll get all the reaction when we come back. We'll name the man of the match and this fella surely has got to be a contender. Jason Yule, it's their biggest win in the Premiership this calendar year, and are they going to enjoy it? That's three times we've been here and seen Charlton pick up seven points. That, it would appear, is part and parcel of a, a winning day at the Valley for Chris Powell. They don't seem to want to leave on the far side of the stadium until he comes out. And if they've played really well, he sometimes comes twice. Go on, Chris. <laughs> 3 1 Charlton, it's a huge win. Back to back wins at Main Road last week and now this week at the Valley against Blackburn Rovers. And the Barker Card Man of the Match is with Claire Tomlinson. Goals have been a bit hard to come by lately. Three today, though. Yeah, you know, um, we've been working hard and trying to get people in the box and take a chance when we get. You know, we've had a little pressure, Sam Yanks scoring enough goals. Right? And, you know, it shows if we keep, keep going and keep plugging away, we'll get chances and show today. You wrapped it up in injury time, you really meant that one. How, how do you rate that in all the goals you've scored, that one? Yeah, one of the better ones, you know, it's just important to always score a goal so late on it sort of just kills the game and it was one of those when you thought it's the last minute, just, just try and shoot at the target and one of those ones it goes in. You've been playing a bit deeper, do you enjoy playing back there a little bit more? Yeah, sometimes, you know, you get, sometimes you get a bit more of the ball pin and how the game goes and the arts me um, against Man City just to do a bit because Klaus is injured and I really enjoy it in there as well as I like playing up front but, you know, once it helps the team and gets points on the table, that's all that sort of matters. The way the home form's been going, well, when you took the lead but only kept it for 70 odd seconds, was it tempting to let your heads drop at that point? What, what was going through your minds? I mean, because it's, it's been up with us for the majority of the season. I mean, either at a time where it's 0-0 and we go one up and concede straight away, it's just disappointing, but it just shows that we wasn't going to make our head drop, we had to respond in the right way, and which we did, we kept plugging away and it showed. It's your first victory over Blackburn at the Valley for 17 years. Did you go into it thinking that, that you know, that sort of thing with the home form the way it was? No, we know that um, over the last two games we've actually got results here, picking up points, and we knew that if we got some points today it would all start hopefully coming together. And obviously winning last week and getting back-to-back -back wins, that was our main aim to try and get 17 points by the end of the day, and um, that's what we've got. Have you turned the corner, do you think? Um, still, still a long way to go, but hopefully we can start, start from there, going to the next week against Leeds. Great goal. Barkley Cup man of the match, Thanks Jason. Well done. Thank you. Well done. That is a big game against Leeds next week now. A terrific second half, wasn't it? Obviously you've won it, so you're pleased, but it was a good, good fair second half, wasn't it? Yeah, I think the change helped everybody. Uh, going 4-4-2 certainly gave us a bit more attacking options in wide areas, and, uh, and Ewell, he, I mean, he, he made some great runs down this left side as well and got some good crosses in, so I think Charlton played very, very well in the second half and deserved the win. Having said that, Tim, will Blackburn leave here scratching their heads and wonder how on earth it was 3-1 and that they've lost? Yeah, I think they'd be a bit aggrieved in the first half, they haven't got the penalty. So, but after that, they, you know, Charlton battled well, nullified Duff, didn't see him in the second half, and really a lot of the Blackburn's play was uh, in front of Charlton and they're pleased with that. We'll have a look at all four free kicks in a moment from a weekend that has seen 37 goals scored in the Premiership and we'll get the boys to pick their tops. You can decide for yourselves, but this has to be somewhere close, surely. The opener, Paul Koncheski, is that something he works on? He does, yeah. I mean, it's usually uh, Klaus Jensen who takes the free kicks. But obviously, Klaus isn't playing today and uh, I think Conch has, has scored before and that was a great finish, great goal. But when you get in front, Tim, what do you want to do? You've got to make sure you don't concede, and that's exactly what they've done. You know, straight up the other end, get a nice layoff from uh, cold air, and great finish. But really, they were sleeping straight from the kickoff. I think it's about 30 seconds from the kickoff. It was 71 seconds between the two goals. 38 seconds after Blackburn had kicked off, David Thompson made it 1-1. And then, how do you feel, Robbie? Well, I mean, we see it so many times, and it's uh, it's amazing how often it happens. And you know, I suppose that the other team kick off and they want to get straight back in the game and maybe, you know, if you're relaxed just for a split second as we've seen there, that, that can happen and it happens a lot and I think it happened yesterday in the, in the games as well. And, uh, it's something that you do try and stop but it always seems to keep happening. Richard Rufus made it 2-1 from the corner. Of course there's always a way of stopping a goal, thank goodness on occasions that isn't the case but as good a header as that is Tim, if Blackburn have somebody on the post, he doesn't score does he? 
No, that's right. I mean, they chose not to, but they should be tight, tighter there. I mean, he's, he's gone in, stood still, planted his feet and just lobbed it into the far corner. I mean, it's a great header. But, you know, he's, I think it's Lucas Neal marking him. Takes him under the ball, stops. All the time in the world now, just plants his feet. It's good execution, isn't it? I think you would have time to think, well, I've got a free header here, make the most of it, and he really did, and stuck it in that, that corner great. And then it was backs to the wall for about 10 minutes towards the end of the game until Jason Ewell, who won the Man of the Match award, unleashed this. It's an absolute rocket, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's gone straight down the, the goalkeeper's throat there, but it's so much pace on it, I think it's just unstoppable. He was all over the place today, Ewell. I thought he, uh, especially second half, I thought he drove him on. And uh, I think they can be thanking him for the three points today. I mean, we could have had other goals. Uh Again, Jason, you remember crossing in for, for Kevin Lisby at the back post. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Lisby had a, you know, a couple of chances, so you know, it hasn't flattered us today. We uh, created a lot of chances and it's pleasing to see something go in. And it's Leeds United next week and them having lost again today, it's a very, very big game, that, isn't it? Definitely. I mean, uh, for them especially, um, I think immediately you think, well, if we, keep, if we can keep it quiet for the first time. <laughs> immediately push the pressure yeah. there. Well, I think it's going to be, isn't it? I mean... We'll certainly be going there thinking if we can keep it nice and tight for the first 15 minutes, the stadium maybe get a bit quiet and, uh, and their players get a little bit edgy. So, see if we can make the most of that. Do you remember the number of times you saw Alan Shearer smash free kicks into the back of opponents' nets down the years? Yeah, many times. Have you ever seen a better one than the one he hit yesterday? No. Just nudge the ball. I think the, uh, the two blockers do well, stop the charges coming in, and uh, he's just got one thing in his mind. Good contact on the ball, and uh, hopefully it flies in. And that's what it's done. James Beattie for 1-1 against Arsenal. Not with the same ferocious power as Didi Haman against Fulham. What's your favourite, Robbie? Well, I think that's the first time I've seen that one. I mean, that, that's got to be the... I mean, this is uh, more accuracy, but, I mean, Haman's power there was uh, incredible, really, wasn't it? But uh, just nicks over a conscious free kick there, I think. That, that's got to be your favourite, hasn't it? Well, what? That one there, surely. Well, it, yeah, but I think the, uh, the Haman one with the, with the power and stuff on it is uh, pretty close to it. What's your favourite? I think the most important one is the one we've just seen there after 90 minutes and you see the results because, you know, for Shearer's goal on Haman's, they get nothing for it. You know, three points for Charlton today is, you know, a godsend. Mm. Absolutely. You'll get some stick for that, you know. Well, yeah, I'm just trying to be, you know, <laughs> trying to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, ours well, is the more, more important one. Absolutely. I think Tim's right there and yeah. uh, it, it sets up for a great win today. Well, we'll get some reaction from both managers very shortly. We'll also see goals, goal, from the second division a little later, but it's the manager's thoughts when we come back. Christmas came early for Charlton today. Here's the manager with Jeff Shreves. Alan, three points and three goals. You must be very happy. Well, I mean, I'm ecstatic after that first half. Um, you know, we never got a go and I had to change it, no disrespect to anybody, but we had to match up with them and, um, you know, be in their faces a bit more. I think the shape of the two sides, they got hold of the ball in the first half and caused us all sorts of problems without having to do too much. So we matched up second half and I think, you know, went on and got the result. Were you lucky to go in nil-nil? Because there was yeah. a strong penalty claim, wasn't there? I don't know about the penalty, but I was desperate for uh, the half-time whistle. I kept asking the linesman because I wanted to make the change, and uh, you know, after 10 or... 10 or 15 minutes to go in the first half and I was just hoping I was going to get to half time to do it um, and thankfully we did, I mean I don't know about the penalty claim but I thought the second half on chances created and um, everything else I think we deserved to win it on the second half display but I think that Blackburn would look at their uh, possession first half and you know they had a few half shots and little, little things going on in our box that perhaps they could have come in leading. Did you think about going out 4-4-2 before the game? Yeah well when we lost Gary Railway I think you know we we're, we're it was a big blow to us because it, it was unexpected, really. And um, I was toying with the idea: can I go four four two? But we've been playing quite well recently. But I uh, always had it in the back of my mind to, to try and match up, and I think it helped us enormously because we was in the right holes. And uh, you know, Duff wasn't getting away like he was in the first half. And um, you know, we managed to to even it up a little bit and came out on top. How big a boost is this? I'm told that's your biggest win this calendar year. <laughs> Well, all you boys with the stats, but I'm pleased with it if it is. Um, I said before the game, you know, to win two on the spin, you know, can we kickstart our season? And uh, uh, hopefully we have. Uh, but it's such a tough league. But uh, to win two on the spin is a great boost for everybody. Let's see if we can carry on. 
more stats. You haven't won two on the spin since the turn <laughs> of the year. Is that the sort of thing, realistically, Alan, that does lift the boys and gives you, it breeds confidence, doesn't it? Well, no matter what you say to them, um, you know, results breed confidence. And uh, I'm sure now they're going to they're come in full of beans this week and looking forward to the games. I know we haven't been that down, but uh, it does help when you get some results. And um, they've been digging in for the last three or four weeks and, you know, they, they've deserved to turn it around. You know, can we carry on now? You said last week that the next eight games could decide our fate this season. You've won the first two. Can you keep going? Well, what I was saying was, is that, uh, you know, if you're in the bottom three or four like we have been, um, you know, leading up to Christmas, if you can put a run together and, and get the other side of Christmas and you're out of all that, then, you know, you look forward to something else. But if you don't put that run together and you're in it at Christmas, as we all know, um, you know, you invariably stay in it and it's a fight right to the end. And, you know, I don't want to be talking about fighting and, and digging out and everything else. Uh, once again, we've, we've played today with four or five major players out. And the, and the squad's held firm, so hopefully that will hold us in good stead. But, uh, you know, I, I was looking at today's game thinking, can we turn the corner? Hopefully we have. Well done to Alan. Thank you. And now you are around that corner. The most important thing, Robbie, as he said, isn't it, is, is to get some kind of run going. What, what would you take, for instance, from next week at Leeds? Well, you've got to look to... I mean, we need a point, really, don't we? We want to keep this run going. Um, I've certainly been involved before at Middlesbrough where I think last season we lost the first four games and then we went on a, a good run and climbed right out of it. So, you know, it's important to keep a run going and, and, and the confidence that come from a good run and, and make us, you know, hopefully can get to mid-table. You've also been involved with Middlesbrough when, when you looked year before last as though you might be slipping out of the Premiership and Terry Venables went in there. What, what did he do to Middlesbrough that it would appear he is unable to do at Leeds at the moment? Well, he came, it, we were rock bottom at the time. Uh, confidence and everything about the club, we were, we were rock bottom. And he came in and was a, a breath of fresh air. I mean, he, uh, the training changed. He went right down to basics. He got us very, very solid. Uh, and played at sometimes with five cent halves at the back. But his general aura was... Um, he never really raised his voice and, and, and we were organised and, and results just came from it. And uh, Middlesbrough fans will tell you today that they've got a lot to thank Terry Venables for because we wouldn't be, um, or Middlesbrough wouldn't be, in the position they are now without what he did last season. Were Spurs particularly up for that today? Was, was Robbie Keane, because it was Leeds, going to be more inspired than he had in previous matches? Yeah, I think you always, when you play against your old team, you're always a little bit more fired up. But the lads are up for it anyway. They've had a, a poor run of results recently. But today they've they've turned the corner and they can go on a run. You know, we've got, a, we've got no injuries now. There's no one in that treatment room, you know, apart from... Um, a list of about 50. Uh, <laughs> apart, apart from Neil Sullivan and uh, Tony Gardner, that's it. I mean, everyone's fit now, so we've got the quality there to take a run forward, and there's no reason why we shouldn't finish right up that league. Are you surprised to see Leeds struggling as well? Yeah, definitely. They've got the players there. End of the day, they've got the players there, and I'm sure it's a matter of time before uh, Terry turns it round. I hope so, because it's a big club. 2-0 at White Hart Lane to Spurs today. Sheringham and Robbie Keane, the goal scorers, if you've missed it. And it's Leeds and Charlton next week. Uh, Graham Sinas is waiting to talk to us. Graham, can you believe that you haven't got anything out of that game today? Um, yes, because that's uh, the, run, the kind of run we're in at the moment. We, um, we feel we're, we're, our football is quite good. But what we're guilty of is conceding goals, um, bad goals, where one of our team just knocks off. And I think um, certainly the one... The second goal today was a case in point. I think we just went to sleep at a vital time when we got ourselves back in the game and maybe look like the team is going to go on and win it. Do you think you should have had a penalty in the first half? Yes. Um, I had um, I got a look at the screen, at the touchline, and um, for me he's taken, a, he's taken Andy Cole's legs. Um, I think he's missed an offside which maybe led to the corner they got from the second goal. So all in all we um, feel sorry for ourselves today. Nil nil at half time, and you forced them to change their system to match up with you. Yeah, we've done we've done well today. You know, we did well against Everton last week. How we lost last week, and how we lost today, and it's been you know for a miserable week because you feel really frustrated about. I mean, if you've been if you've been caned and you've you've not played well, you sort of half accept it if you can't accept a defeat. But when you've done well um, and you're coming away with nothing once more, it is hard to take. But um, I'm a big boy. It's not the first time it's happened to me, and, and the players will have to learn from that. And if they do learn from it, then as long as we keep our heads, keep playing football, we'll be fine. Do you feel there wasn't a lot of difference between the two teams today then? No, I don't think there's a great deal between the teams. You know, Charlton are difficult to play against. They're in your face. They're aggressive with um, every challenge. They get it forward 
quickly, they make your two centre backs head a lot of balls, and um, you have to deal with that. But I felt we dealt with with the largest part today. Um, the first goal, really, we allowed them to run too far, and then to give a foul away where we did was was not very good. The second goal was a bad piece of marking. The third goal, well, um, you have to give the goalkeeper the benefit of the doubt and say maybe he didn't see it till late. But the third goal doesn't matter because we've got our centre forward, we've got four people playing up front at that time. The response to going behind, though, was magnificent. Once you had um, come back to 1-1, one -one, did you think you could have gone on from there? Yeah, I think it's always the way, isn't it? The team who, who come from behind, who level the game, the momentum's with them, and we felt the momentum was with us. Um, but unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. But we, we, we were entitled to feel sorry for ourselves because we, we think it's Lady Luck's not, 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 not with us at the moment. But it's, it's football, and what we have to do is roll our sleeves up. Um, you know, stick our chin out and take another few blows, and, and if we do that and keep playing our football, we'll be fine. Are the players feeling sorry for themselves? Right now they will be, but I would expect um, by 10 o'clock or 10.30 on Tuesday morning that, that'll have gone. And it's about Fulham next Saturday now. We've got a hard game against Fulham. We know we've not played badly today. We feel we should have taken something from the game, but, but that is our point of view. Graham Sinas with Claire Tomlinson. I think he succinctly summed most things up there, Tim, didn't he? Yeah, I think so. I mean, like I said, uh, the penalties are a turning point. They get they nick the first goal and you know it could be a different game, but Charlton deserve it. Barclay Card Premiership bottom to top. The only change in the drop zone this weekend: West Brom and West Ham changing places on goal difference. Point for Bolton. Could Sam Allardyce will think should have been three, which would have made a big difference to them. Chelsea equalising in the last minute, so it's West Ham, West Brom and Bolton in the drop zone. Sunderland beaten at home by Birmingham City, another last minute goal there. They sit in 17th. Charlton and Manchester City swap places, but there are three now on 17 points. One of the three sides, Leeds United. Birmingham in 13th with 19, Fulham ahead of them with 19, and then come Villa, who got their biggest win of the season yesterday. Southampton, Blackburn, Newcastle, all falling a place today. Spurs on the back of their 2-0 win over Leeds United, up into 7th, and as Tim Sherwood was saying, virtually everybody at White Hart Lane fit now, so perhaps a change of fortunes for them. It's been fairly rough over the past couple of weeks. Middlesbrough, 6th. Then come Manchester United, Chelsea, Everton, Liverpool and Arsenal. The top two beaten this weekend, but they stay one and two, Arsenal and Liverpool. Then it's Everton in third place. And Middlesbrough, probably down there in sixth, down, up there in sixth. That's some season for them so far, isn't it? Very good, yeah. I mean, they've uh, brought some new guys in midfield. Um, Boateng and Jeremy's come in. Jonathan Greening's playing very, very well. Uh, Macaroni up front. So they've brought in some good players. Um, Joseph Jobs come in from nowhere really from last season and done very well so everything's clicked into place and they're having a great season. Can they finish, can they finish amongst the big fellas? Um, not sure, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not, I don't think the squad is that big, I don't think there's a, that much strength in depth but um, I'm, you know it's a very good setup there and Steve McLaren very very good coach and it doesn't surprise me that um, they are up there right now. Any reasons, Tim, do you think that it is all a bit tighter this year than in most seasons, as we said right at the start of the show? Nobody's away, and right at the bottom there, nobody's adrift, are they? No, not really, everyone. It's everything to play for. You know, three points make, means a lot of difference. Charlton and Darwin today, you know, they could go adrift a little bit, but, you know, two wins and they're right up there in the top seven. It's amazing, you know, but there's no real reason for it. I just, no, if I knew, I would. Uh, Manchester United don't win yesterday, and perhaps Arsenal do. Twelve points is the gap now. As it turns out, Arsenal lose and Manchester United win. Six points is the gap. That's manageable, isn't it? For yeah. United, without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. And I, like I said earlier in the show, I wouldn't write them off. You know, come March, they're going to be there, and um, you know, write them off at your peril. Um, as a spur, dare you suggest that Arsenal might win it? Um, obviously, the. It, they're one of the favourites to win it. They've got strength in depth. You know they've coped very well with their injuries. You know, and um, I think that's the key. If you get injuries, you've got to bring other people in your squad who can do a job for you. You know, and, you know it's not harp on about the injuries. Let's you know give the positive uh, positive views. You know to the players who are in there. You know, mm. and let them go on and do it. If you keep crying about your injuries, then the players who are coming in think they're not worthy of a place. You know, and it's up to the players who go in there. To, to grasp it and take it and I think that's what um, the players have done at Arsenal and I'm sure we could do that at Spurs and we, like I say we got the players to get right up in that league and I just hope we do it. And what about Chelsea who have crept in there 
and with some resilience as well. A late, late goal yesterday on, on another day, in another season, probably would have lost at Bolton. Have they cured that problem? I think so. They're very solid at the back. You know, and they've got, they got defenders there, uh, Gallus and Desai, who can defend on their own, and the rest just go and play. You know, and I think they're excellent. I think Chelsea are a team who can beat anyone on their day. Whether they've got the consistency to, to win the title, I question that. But they're going to their company this afternoon. But we started the day talking about the anniversary, the 10th anniversary of Charlton's return to the Valley. It turned out to be a very good day for them. Three one winners, back-to-back -back wins, and they're moving at last. They've been here before.